The fourth stop of the Crankworks World Slope Style Tour is on. Rotorua was all about USA's Nikolai Rakatkin. Lachey saw Canada's Brett Reeder write the perfect comeback story. Then in Innsbruck, the plot was twisted twice. Rokatkin. Den Reader going head to head in a slope style comp for the ages. Here in Whistler, everything is in play. The Triple Crown of Slope Style, the World Tour title, and the prestige of a Red Bull Joyride win. Would you want to be a judge? The Crankworks World Slope Style final is here. Red Bull Joyride begins now. This is what it's all about. The place to be, Creekworks World Tour. Here we go. Several dimensions are shaping victories. Oh, stopping it! So perfect, this is ridiculous. The best mountain bike riders on earth. Check the time here. Can he keep it up? He enters the final oh. fairway. One queen and one king will claim the title of best all-around mountain biker on the planet. It is this never-ending, progression-producing terrain that has provided the foundation of Freeride's evolution. Now, with decades of history, new accomplishments, new names, and potential new records will be set at Crankworx Whistler. 
Welcome to Crankworx Whistler and thank you to the Squamish and Lilwat Nations for welcoming Joyride here to their traditional territory. How's it going everyone? Pat Parnell along with pro rider Cam McCall and energy and expectations have officially reached a season high point as we have multiple thickening plot lines developing. Yeah, it's always the most exciting day of the year for the world of slope style, and this year for more reasons than ever. Nikolai Ragakin, a chance to be the first rider taking that Triple Crown title. Brett Reeder, he's here trying to defend that championship that he won last year. And then the heir apparent, Emil Johansson, leading the Crankwork Slope Style World Tour. We've got a big show on our hands today. And so many spoilers in the mix. The depth of talent is staggering. Before we get underway with today's competition, let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team. She's a bit battered from the bike park earlier this week, but she is up and ready to do the job. How's it going there, Tina? Hey, Pat. Yeah, yeah, it's going pretty well. I'm a bit battered. Yeah, I did that famous trick where you go over the handlebars to dirt to broken collarbone. I don't, you yeah. know, just wanted to be part of the broken collarbone club. Well, it's a, it's a badge of honor, definitely, when you talk about Whistler Bike Park. Uh, let's talk about this season. I know you've been watching closely. Um, talk about, you know, developing plot lines and drama, right? Oh my gosh, if we go back to Innsbruck, I mean, one of the best slope style contests any of us have ever witnessed, you know, and I was down in the corral and it was pins and needles between Brett Reeder and Nikolai Ragakin, and I expect it to be just the same, if not more here at this event. You know, Nikolai Ragakin, you guys talked about it. He's going for that triple crown, something no one has ever done before. He told me he's excited for that opportunity. And Brett Reeder, there is so much pressure at this event, especially with defending his win from last year year and the riders are even saying this one especially 60% mental 40% riding so keep your eyes out for Brett but the one variable Brandon Semenek we haven't seen him much at all this year guys he's been doing a lot of filming he's on YouTube a lot his video parts he's showing up and one thing we don't normally see from him he will be dropping in first yeah, absolutely, Tina. Having Brandon Semenuk, based on his FMB points, he's going to be the first rider to drop in. Good luck to be a judge. Tough, tough news if you're a judge. Great news if you're a fan. Yeah, I mean, we're yeah. accustomed to having to wait till the end of the event to see Brandon drop in. Having him drop in first now because he doesn't have points that he's racked up throughout the whole season like all the other riders, we could see the first run of the day be a winning run. So yeah. we're going to kick things off with a bang today. Yeah, he, historically, he has been that, that, that point of rivalry with so many other riders. But let's talk about the rivalry with Rogatkin and Reeder as we look at the details. And what a great back and forth. Yeah, it's been a dogfight between these two the last couple of years, especially this year. Just take a look at the results from the 2016 season. Both riders on the podium numerous times. And then here's the results from 2017. Brett, not in Rotorua, still healing up an injury. And then the dogfight in Innsbruck. Nikolai just barely edging him out with the first place. Brett definitely wants to knock him out here in Whistler. Oh, you say dogfight. I say it was a cage match, and we expect much of the same here today. So as you can see, some great rivalries already ensuing. Let's take a closer look at the Crankworks format. This year, the Crankworks Slope Style World Tour is a four-stop series, with it all ending right here in Whistler, British Columbia. That's right, Red Bull Joyride. Now the competition format, fairly simple. Two runs where best run counts, and it offers that all-or-nothing approach is something we love. And who's deciding the rankings out here? Well, we have four judges and one head judge. We're putting those numbers on the paper to determine who wins the competition at the end of the day. The highest score wins. Now the points at the end also goes towards the scores and that's important when we talk about the overall title. Each rider's top score from all four events gets added up. The rider with the biggest score at the end wins $25,000. Now, win three out of the four, which Nikolai Rogatkin could possibly do, an extra $25,000 for a Triple Crown Slope Style title. That's a lot to drink in. And when you talk about the season, it's all about the consistency, which brings us to our Crankworks World Tour standings. And uh, no surprise, you see the Swede on top, but rounding out the top three, you have Lemoyne followed by Rogatkin. But can the Swede hold onto it and pull off the unthinkable? Right now, we have Emil Johansson. Emil, a lot of the riders, when they're riding practice, working on the run, it looks like just that work. Yet, when you're riding practice, you look like a kid in the playground, mixing things up every time you drop in. When you showed up this morning, did you have your run set in stone, or are you still experimenting with ideas? Uh, I'm still experimenting. I have a lot of, like, at least a few things I'm not 100% sure on to do, like what to do where, and 
even what trick I'm going to do on certain jumps because it seems like it's going to start blowing a little bit more in the wind. So a few tricks is not perfect for the wind. So probably change a few up to make it run. It looks like you have a lot of options. I'm confident you'll make the right decisions. Good luck to you out there, Emil. Thank you. Well, as you can see, the course is already filling up and always much of the focus is about this, the course. It's always a crack and a juggernaut and it really tests the best riders in the world and pushes them to the ultimate limits. Let's take a look at this year's Red Bull Joyride course. So on top of a raucous capacity crowd here in the heart of the Whistler Bike Park, all these riders have to contend with a very intimidating course. 12 features in all, and I want to point out at the top, two options, something we love to see. Yeah, look at this thing. You're basically staring at the world's most gigantic mountain bike trick bowl rhythm section. The star drop, like you said, has two options. The first ramp to dirt shoots you straight up into the sky. And right now we're getting difficult with a left hand hip. Stay tuned later on down the course where that's get gets balanced out by a right hip. But first, it's a four pack. This is where you're gonna wanna see those riders linking tricks that are complementary to each other. The first one's easier to overshoot. The second one's actually kinda hard to clear. Now your right hip. It's hard to trick hips. You're gonna have to trick them both ways. It is nonstop from start to finish, but the whale tail, a feature where you're gonna see a lot of riders focus on. It's a crowd pleaser. It's elevated, a step up into a lip step down. Very difficult to trick those step down features, and you're gonna have to do one after another with the next feature being the cannon log. This thing is the steepest cannon log we've ever seen, Pat. Now, it's all about that last indelible mark that you leave with the judges. What can we expect at the end? The last stop of four and the only one that has a flat drop to end it. It's gonna separate the men from the boys. Well, as you can see, a capacity crowd is just filling in and uh, we expect even more by the thousands as we are about to commence Red Bull Joyride 2017. And what an illustrious list of riders we have here. Every single one of these riders could upset the balance. Yeah, the level of riding right now, it's not like what we saw before. We only have two guys who could win it. There's a handful of guys who could take it if things go their way. Well, you see some, uh, some good riders, and as we wind it down, the final rider dropping in will be defending champion Brett Reeder. But all the focus right now is on one gentleman, often emulated, never duplicated, Brandon Semenuk. As we look at a very focused Semenuk, and he has delivered the goods time and time again as we look at the numbers, and they do not lie. He is the main reason why there are so many people on this course right now. He's been a crowd pleaser year after year, and if you look at those results right there, four wins right here on this course, but he has faltered just as many times as he's won here. So usually we see him going all out first run. It's either gonna be a stomped run, or last year we saw him fall off the bridge. Basically, you yeah. never know what can happen when this kid drops in. And, and that is exactly why he is a favorite among the purists. Uh, we call him that, that brilliant mind, that beautiful mind of mountain biking. He's all about doing something new. He definitely wants to always keep it progressive. Can he go from a four-time Joyride champion to becoming the first ever five-time title contender? Here we go, Brandon Simonek, run one of two. What will we see? Brandon Semenik coming into the start drop, a half cab. That's the trick that took him out last year. He stomps it right off the bat here in 2017. A backflip, double tail up on the step up, straight into a cork 720 on the hip, having to over rotate because it's a hip to the left. An opposite cork 720. We have not seen that yet from Brandon Semenuk. Somebody's been keeping his blade sharp during this season while all the other riders were competing on the tour. Opposite double tail up into regular double tail up. And now backflip bar spin up. A 360 tail up down, straight to the pedals. It looks like he's on point, Pat. Seamless Semenuk so far. A backflip uh, off the cannon, landing a little long. He's got one last feature here, the on-off box. What's it gonna be? The backflip one fit a can down and he stomps it. That is the Brandon Semenuk everyone was expecting. Now the tough job to calibrate. The first rider out of the gate from top to bottom, flawless. 
just the endurance needed to go top to bottom, all 12 features, a dozen banger tricks, and to perform them all with precision like Brandon Semenuk, he's trying to catch his breath down there. Can we talk about all the speculation this week, watching him in practice, a lot of that stuff, it was kind of, a, like you said, keeping the cards close to his chest. Well, he's been putting out video parts, but he hasn't been competing with these guys. And you know what? It's a different ball game when you got all these fans here, all the pressure of the World Tour, and especially riders who are at the end of their season who are really up to speed with their strategies. There's an opposite double tail up. He adds symmetry by doing a regular double tail up right after it. The 360 tail up out of the cabin, always going to score high because that step down feature is very difficult to trick. Another step down feature immediately, that cannon. Hard to judge speed, all the riders struggling with distance on that. Looks like we have a truck driver up and the flat drop, backflip one footed can. Looked like he almost got a little sideways on that, but <laughs> recovered right at the right time. I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, jumping back into the big show at the end of the season, there was a lot of question, you know, will the nerves get to him? I think he just answered decisively uh, with, uh, no, I've got this. So where will the numbers sit? That is gonna be the tough thing. They, Scores coming in, and 89.8 for Brandon Semenuk. Run number one in the books for him. He's going to have to wait and see how that's going to sit with the rest of the field. It's not often that yeah. we start out an event that close to the 90s, only .2 off. We usually have to wait until the end of the field to see that. This is really going to light the fuse on this event. And you'd have to guess the judges leaving that room to see where the runs are going to go as we go down the order. The first of two runs, remember, it's best run that counts and here is a rider a convert on a mission to find the success and dominance he found in BMX and it has taken years for him to make that jump Josh Holt 33 years old a sturdy character as you put it in both in mind and body now he finds himself at his first joy ride yeah Josh Holt he's been chugging away at this for a long time about six years on the mountain bike now finally making it to joy ride the Super Bowl of the sport starting out with a 360 double bar spin, opting for the lip down feature. Now a backflip double bar spin on the step up. That classic oh. Superman tail up that Josh Holt is known for, but unfortunately, bobbling the landing, not having enough speed for the first jump in that second straightaway. So unfortunate for Josh Holt, he will have a chance on his second run. We should note that even in practice this morning, he blew two tires, so that's kind of resonating in his mind as well. <laughs> All the days yeah. leading up to this event, there's so much practice, so many opportunities for things to go wrong. He's had a lot of big crashes, like you said, a lot of mechanical struggles, but this guy has his eye on the prize. And something to talk about with regards to this course is that it is absolutely a rhythm section. If you bobble at all, you're not gonna have speed for the next feature. But Josh Holt looks yeah. like he's gonna finish this one off for the fans. Maybe use it as an opportunity to get some extra practice, front flipping that second jump in the four pack. Oh, an opposite oh. tail going down hard this time. Well, good to see uh, Josh Holt up on his feet. So he'll shake that off and look onward and forward to run number two. But we were talking about uh, <laughs> just the nemesis of flat tires, and that's exactly what this gentleman has dealt with. Talk about unfinished business. Matt Jones, it has been a tough season to say the least. It basically seems like somebody is pulling a practical joke on this kid. He finally made it to Joyride last season, but that crash you saw right there was what took him out of contention. And then, you know, he's a mainstay on the Crankworx World Tour, but he's the guy who has not completed a run. You saw him over rotate that double backflip in Leger. In the second run, he blew a tire. Another event, another no top to bottom run for him. In Innsbruck, we thought, come on, this cannot continue. Crashes another double flip run number one. And then same thing again. It's always double flip crashes and flat tires for Matt Jones. Can this finally be the time where he completes a Crankworx slope style run? I think all his fans uh, where he grew up in Woburn, uh, you know, they're asking themselves, can this guy get a break? <laughs> and I think the fans uh, definitely a resounding yes. He, you know, he definitely needs it. And here's what's at stake for Matt Jones. He is on the bubble. He wants to requalify. He's one of the top riders, and it's surprising that we're even having this discussion when we're talking about Matt Jones. Because he is so capable. He has everything it takes to be a top rider. But this is his chance right now, after he's built the suspense, to make good on this promise and stay on the tour. A flat drop backflip off the start drop into the step up, huge amplitude and great extension out of that backflip Superman.
Now 270, that left hand hip, his natural direction. Big extension on that backflip tuck no hander. And complementing that with a 360 tuck no hander, here's the jump he crashed on last year. He's not opting for that 720 in run number one. Maybe thinking, you know what? Maybe I'll choose a little bit less difficult tricks and just try to get this monkey off my back and make it into the finished corral. So far, Matt Jones, very calculated, nearing the bottom half of the course. Big combo on that cannon, Pat. Now into the last feature, a 360 up, a flat drop down. He's finally completed <laughs> a Cranford Slope style run. Officially checking it off his list. Matt Jones, all smile. And you can see <laughs> the trip to get to this point for Matt Jones. Hasn't been easy, but well worth the effort. So taking a different strategy right now, and I'm sure the reason behind that is the goal to get a complete run. Not using some of the huge tricks that he He's been throwing out all season like that double backflip or that 720. Bear in mind, those are also tricks that have been taking him out of contention, causing him to not complete runs. So right now, seeing Josh Holt crash right ahead of him, thinking back maybe to last year, how it took so long through the field until we finally saw a top to bottom full run. He has more in the tank and now he's evolved. He's adapted the strategy of get one in the bag and then experiment in run number two. I can't wait to see what he's hiding now that he's earned himself the opportunity to let it all on the line in his second run. Well, the good news is the saga of suffering mishaps is behind Matt Jones uh, as he has a solid one in the books as we wait for scores. Young rider out of Great Britain, a 65.8. We'll put him in second place for the moment. Let's check in with Tina Dixon. Yeah, thanks guys. And Matt is down here with a smile on a face. Something we've been waiting for him to do all year, top to bottom. Just how does that feel? So good. I'm honestly just a stranger to this sensation of getting to the end. And that's what I came here to do. Run number one's locked in. And uh, you know, it's so fun just watching the first guys go. Everyone up there is excited. Brandon kicked things off like a maniac. So excited to see what everyone's got. I've got another run in the bag. so. Thanks for uh, cheering me on when I got to the bottom. Best of luck with that second run. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Tina. And you'd love to see that. You know, this event uh, means so many different things to so many different riders. You know, some people are looking for the personal best. Some are looking to requalify, which he potentially just did. And some are looking to defend a title. So it's, uh, it's obviously a big feat. So much at stake here for so many riders. Yeah, Matt Jones got that monkey off his back. <laughs> Maybe he can accomplish two goals here. Get a complete run and then get a dream run. So the 27-year-old Jakob Wenzel out of Prague, gets ready for his first of two runs. And earlier this season, just finished just outside the podium at 26 tricks in Leo Gang. So he's definitely felt being close to those podiums, but this, the biggest arena the sport has to offer, Red Bull Joyride, and you can imagine the nerves right now, trying to think about everything you've done in practice this week and to lay it on the line with the crowd the way it is right now. And this will be his first experience with yep. that sensation. No stranger to all the other events on the series, but he's one of two riders in our field today who have never competed in Red Bull Joyride. And he knows about hard work, falling off tour, having to climb back on. A very determined rider. What does he have in store for run number one of two? Here we go, Jakob Wenzel drops in. Jakob Wenzel earning multiple wild cards this year to stay on the Diamond Series. A great result at Colorado Freeride Festival bought him an invite here. And let's see if he can put it all on the line when it counts. Good extension on that 270 table on the hip. The view from the sky, our helicopter angle of that 360 tuck no hander, a 720 on the second jump in the four pack. Now flipping the hip, so difficult to land straight. I thought he was gonna throw that one away, but he pulled it together, a tuck no hander up in to the whale tail, a 360 tuck no hander down. Now if Jakob at his first run in Joyride can put a top to bottom run down, it's gonna feel amazing for the Czech Republic rider. 360 up, a flat drop flip down, and he's done it, Pat. Jakob Wenzel in his first Joyride appearance pulls off a clean run. So success for the Czech rider. And except for that deep landing in the hip, fairly clean throughout that run. Very impressive for Jakob. Let's take a look back at the replay. So this was one missed opportunity here on the step up. It was a straight backflip. 
you know he was looking for some sort of a combination on that. But let's focus on some of the highlights. A big one for me was that 720. Now he pumped really hard to be able to get the speed to flip this hip. And you notice the riders having to lean off the side of their bike to be able to line up to that angled landing. Doing a great job of adapting to all these difficult features and putting a top to bottom run in. So once again, uh, hats off to our esteemed judging panel. It is gonna be a difficult day to quantify and uh, to put numbers on these incredible runs. Uh, you're gonna see some amazing variety. Of We're noticing tricks. a much higher success rate this yeah. year at this point in the competition than we had last year. That's great to well, see. Word, word on the, the slopes here this week, definitely the riders happy with how the course is, definitely has a little bit more fluidity, the way that it flows. Um, not so, I think last year there was complaints of almost too much where <laughs> they kind of threw everything at them, including the kitchen sink. I think they're really liking the flow and uh, the, the setup of this course so far this year. And I think Testament, as you pointed out, is uh, just these, these clean runs. Yeah, it's a similar flow to last year in terms of how many features yeah. and what actually is there. But yeah, another year they have an opportunity to fine tune it. So Jakob Benzel, 64.4 will put him in third place or at the moment. So, all right, so our next rider up is going to be Reed Boggs, the wild card. And uh, you're probably asking, what is Reed Boggs doing in the start gate? Well, for more on that, we check in with Tina Dixon. Thanks, Pat. A quick update. Earlier in practice, Max Fredrickson, someone we were really looking forward to see ride, took a fall, and he has broken his collarbone, something that I am now familiar with. Um, so we're wishing Reed Boggs the best of luck with his run, but we're also wishing Max Fredrickson the best of luck with his recovery. Remember, he did take third place last year, and up next, it is Reed. The good news is that uh, Max Fredrickson broke the opposite collarbone that he was dealing with last year that had a plate put in it. So not as impactful as it could have been. Tough season for that kid, you know, third place last year, but a very opposite story for Reed Boggs here. A kid who's shown up to multiple contests this year as an alternate and then found himself in the finals. Always up there for practice, knowing that he may or may not even get the opportunity, but putting together a run just in case. A double tail up on the step up, Great style on that 360 one-footed table into the hip, having to over-rotate. Backflip bar spin to tuck no-hander. This kid really rises to the opportunity when he gets the nod. A 270 bar spin. Man, competing at a competition that you didn't know you were even going to be making the, the list on. Practicing not knowing if you're going to have to put it all on the line on Sunday. It looks like he's rising to the occasion here at 360 off of the cannon. Can Reed Boggs get a top to bottom in his first ever joy ride? One last feature, a 360 down wow. and he stomps it. Reed Boggs out of Hurricane Utah. Wow. Delivers Reed Boggs. to sit on the sidelines and to get called up <laughs> into the big league right on the morning of. Talk about nerves. Yeah, the mental <laughs> strength needed to be able to just rise to the occasion the morning of and say, oh, yeah. all right, well, <laughs> I'll figure something out. He got a top 10 in Innsbruck, a kid who definitely wasn't expecting to be at every single Crankworx Slope Style event this season when he was in Rotorua and got the alternate position. A backflip tail up on the second jump in the four pack, linking a trick on absolutely every feature. At the beginning of the season, we thought it would be years until he found himself at a joy ride, but persistence pays off. Well, and he's a, a rider, he's known for having that innate ability to gauge speed on big jumps, and we just saw it. <laughs> he just laid down an incredible first run, so. Any consistent clean run at joy ride is a great run. So, so current standings as we are still in the midst of the first of two runs, are just this, where oh. Boggs, a 67, moves into second place, right behind four-time Joyride winner, Brandon Seminook. What a season for this kid. He also just got the invitation to Red Bull Rampage. So 2017, definitely a huge one for Reed Boggs. Yeah. 
For everyone just tuning in, we are still in the midst of the first of two runs where best run counts here at Red Bull Joyride. Brandon Semenuk, our first rider out of the gate, is our current leader, and this is what just went down. Now, something to note, that backflip double tail up that he did on the step up, that's the trick that took him out in the only slope style event that he decided to show up to on this 2017 season. He's ironed out the kinks. You know he's been practicing in his backyard. We usually see bigger extension on that backflip one-footed can. So if you know Brandon Semenuk, you know he put down a big run, but he probably has more in the chamber as well for run number two. So a great view of the start there, offering two options. We saw Reed Boggs uh, offer for that right entry point as Nico Schultz, the rider out of Germany, known for going huge, has double flips, the Cork 720, but we saw earlier in the year, going big, sometime you have to pay the price. Took a very hard fall. We saw his back earlier in the season. He's no stranger to pain and climbing back. Will we see some of the big marquee tricks if Nico wants to get close to the podium? Yeah, the European stops were tough from him, but he pushed through the pain and got respectable results at both of those stops. But it's all about Joyride right now, the biggest crowd in the sport. Lofty backflip. Now a single tail up on the hip. We're gonna need to see some big combinations out of him on the four pack. He's gonna be able to take Brandon Semenuk out of the top spot. A backflip heel clicker. He unveiled that one in Innsbruck. And that's a trick that nobody else in the field is doing. A tuck no hander into the whale tail. A backflip tuck no hander down. You gotta love that helicopter camera angle. And into the most challenging feature on the course, getting a tail up on the cannon. Nico Schultz, what does he have for us on the flat drop? A 360 down, another smooth one in the bag. Cleanliness right out of the gate into the finished corral for Nico Schultz, the 22-year-old. So expecting uh, potentially more in terms of what we know he has in the tank. Uh, do, do you consider that? I hate to say it, but even a safety run for Nico for what we know he has in his holster. Well, we know he has yeah. double flips and cork 720s. We know he has that huge tsunami backflip. But after last year, seeing so many riders not get their first run from the start tower to the finish corral, I think a lot of the strategy from these riders has been start out with something smooth and strong and then sprinkle on the seasoning in run number two. It is so difficult to link together a dozen different tricks on 12 features. And you see him throw his head back right there. The elation you feel yeah. when you enter that finished corral and hear the roar of the crowd, you can't explain it. You can hear the crowd here, right? When you're riding down, it's, <laughs> it's definitely audible. 56.8, it'll put him in the top five, but still many more riders to go. And I, I think the expression on the face says it all. I think he has a little bit more to add on that run as we look onward and forward. Still the score to beat in 89.8. Brandon Semenuk, the first rider out of the gate. And how long is that score gonna last? That is the big question as we can see the fans still making their way. It is standing room only as we get ready for the young Italian, Diego Caversassi, out of Italy. 23 years old, and it's been an interesting season for him. A 13th in Rotorua, 7th in Leger, and then another a 16th in Innsbruck. And we know that Diego has everything in his arsenal to be a contender. You know, one thing that he yeah. doesn't have that all these other guys have is a bike sponsor. That's right. Watch the run that this kid's about ready to put down. And if you're out there in the marketing department of any frame manufacturer out there, you need to get your logo on this kid's bike. Oh, oh no, not a crash over rotating a back foot variation only on the second feature on the course. We saw him struggle the last two events with big crashes that definitely made the highlight reel. Unfortunately, more the same for Diego Caverzasi in run number one. Unfortunately, the privateer out on his first of two runs, but he will have that second where best run counts. The big question, Brandon Semenuk, can anyone eclipse the 89.8? We have a handful of riders that think they can. Stay with us, much more to come from Red Bull Joyride here in Whistler, BC, right after this. Stay close.
Nikolai Rogatkin. A chance for redemption coming off Joyride, but a chance also to showcase what he's been working on. A triple tail whip from the Barsman, the top no hander. Oh, he's on a good one. Front flip on the dirt to dirt into the final feature. Going for the twister. Can he land it? Perfect. Whoa, the crowd is losing their minds. Unbelievable. Welcome back, everyone, to Crankworks Whistler. It is the fourth and final stop of the Crankworks World Tour, featuring stops in Rotorua, New Zealand, as you just saw in March, Leger, France, and Innsbruck, Austria, in June. And I'll tell you what, it has been uh, a barn burner already. Brandon Semenuk laying down the gauntlet. The big question as we get farther down to those top qualifiers, will we see a challenger in the 90s? Oh, things are going to yeah. heat up for sure. You know, we've seen Brett Reeder kind of taking tricks that he's seen Brandon using for wins and apply them into his own tricks to form winning runs. But now we saw Brandon Semenuk bring that his version of the opposite Cork 720, something that got Brett the win here last year. So definitely going to be exciting to see those top three riders drop last. Well, a veteran in uh, the mix of mountain biking made the switch from BMX to mountain bikes in 2008. Uh, often said to be an underrated rider. Uh, got a six in Leger this year, just outside of the top five, but we're always asking the question about Medigani. What is it going to take to crack that, that, that coveted top three? One thing we can say about Medi is he's been incredibly consistent this season, getting at least one smooth run in the bag every time out. For Medi, it's going to be a matter of can he get those combinations, those really difficult tricks that we know he's oh. capable of, going down on the Cork 720 on the hip. Very yeah. difficult to judge speed for a lot of the features on this course. Speed's not a problem for some. You have a an excess of speed right there. He may have tapped a little break into that Cork 720. We're going to take a look back at the replay just to see if he came up short on this backflip tail. It looked like he landed smooth. And he popped into that Cork 7 nice, but he was half a bike length short. I'm actually surprised to see how short he came after landing smooth on that flip whip. Yeah, surprising where he cased. Well, where his body landed yeah. too. I mean, hopefully we'll see him back for a second run. It looked like he kind of got whiplashed a little bit, but he's up and walking around, so that's great yeah. to see. You look at that body language, carrying the bike, working his way back up, because he knows it's two runs, best run counts. He'll have a second chance to work out the, the kinks, as we see uh, Logan Pete and uh, the grizzled veteran, Ryan Nyquist, uh, having some words, talking about the course. So it has been an incredible season for all the fans of slope style and the back and forth with Rogatkin and Reeder. It has been the story of 2017. Raising the grade of slope style mountain biking to new heights, the battle between Rogatkin and Reeder has been building all season long. The third stop in Innsbruck brought the most exhilarating showdown of the season so far to decide which rider would progress along the path for Triple Crown glory. Nikolai Rogatkin. Pressure like this does not get any greater. Remember, he won the first stop in Rotorua. Kia and welcome, everyone. With Reader out due to injury, Rogatkin drew first blood in New Zealand. Into the final feature, going for the twister. Can he land it? Hey, perfect! Nicolai the crowd is losing their mind. All has chicken skin at this moment because one other rider has the potential, forever focused. The resurgent reader, his absence in Rotorua came back in Leger. Bonjour, bienvenue, and welcome. Returning to competition in France, Reader came back victorious. Stronger than ever. Fork 720 bars, oh! he lands it! Incredible. The big question is, who will take first and second? We know that we're about to witness perhaps history. If anybody can feed off the energy that we have right now, a oh! twister on the dirt to dirt, right into the regular Quark 720 bar spin. Perfect oh. cash roll. Opposite truck driver in. A double tail up down. 
Backflip double tail whip, oh. he stops it! Oh! A catch Yo. roll tail whip straight to Padoff! Rogakin makes history you here against Brock! You gotta be kidding me! Now, one final test remains. Will the weight of the Triple Crown overcome Rogatkin as it did for Reader in the past? Or will Reader send it and achieve back-to-back -back joyride wins in front of his home crowd? The battle is on here in Whistler, BC. You can feel the nerves. It is a palpable energy here in Whistler as we see Nikolai Rogatkin, the only Triple, ca tri triple Crown contender in the mix. Uh, just judging his body language all morning. He knows what's at stake as we jump right back to the top. Anthony Maziri, uh, a young rider at 21 years, and uh, we were talking about it earlier this week, just how young he was when he entered Joyride. At the time, 16 years old, the youngest that has ever, actually going back to 15 years old, I'm, I'm shorting him a year, actually. Yeah, he was yeah. 15. I mean, it's because it seems unbelievable. And at the time, he was an absolute wingnut. He has now matured into a very, very tactical rider, sitting fourth in the Crankworks Slope Style World Tour overall rankings, meaning that he's been pulling down top scores at every single event so far this year. He's looking on point on this run right now. Oh! Was that a backflip opposite tail whip? On that first jump, you never see yeah. him messing up backflip tail. So we're going to have to consult the replay. Well, he's gone on record. He said that he's upped his regiment, his focus this year. Definitely adding some new things to the mix. But a great, if you're going to have to eject, a great way to do it. Well, he normally kicks his tail with his left foot. He kicks them counterclockwise direction. He did a backflip tail up at the start of the run. Let's see which direction he kicked this tail up on the backflip tail up on the first jump on the four pack. It looked like it was his yeah. normal direction. So surprising blunder from the now veteran Anthony Missouri in front of his home crowd. So Missouri will finish out the run, but unfortunately a throwaway for him as he'll work his way into the finish corral. One last feature as he rounds the last corner. So, disappointment there. Starting out very yeah. strong on that yeah. run. And, you know, the way he's been riding all season, it's surprising to see him mess up. He's been consistent yeah. enough to be sitting in fourth place in the overall World Tour rankings. So, a lot of pressure on yeah. run number two for Anthony Mazzari. And it's been amazing to watch, too, how he has remained relevant from 15 years onward and still charging forward. We had the... Uh, Lucky uh, situation earlier in the week. I uh, watched him uh, spend some time with the local kids at the local uh, kind of pump track down against the skate park. And it was so cool to see them spending time with the, the younger generation of riders. Brandon Seminuk still on top. Can anyone beat the 89? Uh, there's been so much focus and expectations put on Logan Pete. Uh, there's one word we use over and over when we talk about him is the style. And when you talk about the pressures of Joyride, Logan's no stranger to that. We talked with him earlier this week about riding this course in particular. I'm a very fortunate person. I live at Brandon's and we have a pretty insane setup. Lots of features the same size as this and some stuff even bigger. So as far as the size goes, it's comfortable, but we're still here with a course with I don't even know how many features. So it's so hard to put it all together. You're lucky to have a trick for each jump let alone to do it all in a row. So it's really hard, technical, but we'll see. He doesn't sound phased, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Mentally strong, technically strong, uh, obviously a rider that is used to these massive features, and then it doesn't hurt that you're spending time with Brandon Seminuk. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the best preparation anybody could ever ask for. And that shot we saw earlier of him kind of hanging out in the rider's area at the start of the course, he just never seems to be rattled. He always seems to have his head on straight, and we know him for putting together smooth runs. The rider with the most bike control out there, spinning both directions. That was a 360 at the star drop. I'm gonna have to look at the replay. He may have nose blocked oh. it. Oh no, another uncharacteristic error from another yeah. very consistent Canadian. Yeah. What's happening here? That's, uh, you <laughs> think that says it all. I, and to lose it on, a, on that feature and doing a backflip, well, 
Now it's actually finally starting yeah. to feel reminiscent of last year. We've seen right. a lot of crashes in the last few runs. So has uh, maybe the gauntlet that has been laid down by Brandon Semenuk, maybe uh, starting to feel the reverberations with that 89.8. So Brandon's starting run to kick this event off. He usually gets to sit there and wait to see what he needs to do based on what the top riders are doing. But right now he had to go for it and he did exactly that by doing that opposite cork 720. It's the first time we've seen him do that in a competition. It's a trick that won the event last year. So he knows if he wants to win, it's a good thing to have. Looked like he wanted a variation on the backflip off of that cannon. So expect more out of run number two from him if he needs to. So there you see Torquato Testa, the Italian out of the Monza Bike Park. Getting his playlist, we know that his, uh, his music, it's very important when he rides, but also style, as we found out in uh, Cam McCall meets earlier this season. Let's take a look. How important is style to you? Yeah, style for me, it's pretty important. I really like to make my style not from really mountain biking, but more thinking about skiing. Because I really like how the skiers, freeride skiers and slopestyle skiers show their styles, their way to, to, to ski and to ride. Well, I think it's safe to say every Italian genetically has style. <laughs> whether, whether it come from loafers, Ferraris, or uh, riding. And uh, definitely Diego and Torquato leading the charge uh, for the Italians here. Uh, the big question, had a second in Rotorua how can Torquato dig back into that podium success that he found at the first stop this season? Well, he needs to use what he has. When I had the opportunity to visit him at his home in Italy, it was ridiculous watching his daily training regimen, including stuff like double backflips. We saw him fall on a double backflip in Innsbruck, something that he does absolutely every day. So we're hoping to see him land it here in Whistler in front of this gigantic crowd. Currently in fifth in the overall oh, results, double back. There it is, did he get it? He crashed. Three crashes in a row at least. This is not looking the way we thought it was going to look after seeing Brandon Semenuk start this competition off with a top to bottom banger close to the 90s. Torquato Testa now crashing on a double flip. The door is officially getting um, more open <laughs> with each run here, offering up opportunity to the riders that can put a clean, consistent run. It's going to be tough yeah. to knock Brandon out. There's a few riders in the field who absolutely can do it. But those other two podium spots are really looking up for grabs right now with how many riders we're seeing crash. So we were talking up the double flip. We saw him throw it right off the bat here, but over rotating. We talked about it earlier when we did the course preview. That jump has a very steep lip. You can take it straight up into the air, making it a little bit more difficult to gauge the rotation needed to do a double backflip. He's going to have to rotate it a little bit slower next run. So right back to the start. As we look at the father of three boys, 38-year-old Ryan Nyquist. What a year it has been for him and the fact that we're talking about Ryan Nyquist in the overall World Tour rankings, currently in third place, uh, how, how does that sit with you? A guy that's put this much time in BMX and then mountain biking and to be a contender in the overall. It's exciting for the sport of mountain biking to have Ryan Nyquist embracing it, but it's also exciting for all these Ryan Nyquist fans out here doing exactly what he did in his BMX career, now on a bigger bike, on these bigger features, he's been known for consistency his entire career, spanning a couple decades. And right now, let's see if he can back up all the success he's had this year. A 360 suicide no-hander on the lip option on the step down. A backflip suicide no-hander to bar spin. Over oh. spin, 720, <laughs> needing about 800 degrees of rotation to land that trick on that jump. Backflip one-handed X up into a double truck driver. Expect to see him spinning opposite on this one. He oh. does almost over rotating. Yeah. Another over spin on that hip, doing that both directions on both hips. Judges are going to love it. A double truck driver down. This is just trademark. Ryan Nyquist riding a truck driver on the oh. cannon, over rotating but not losing speed. Looks to still have air in his tires. A backflip on. Can he three down? He stopped it. Ryan Nyquist, huge run. relentless. Oh, man. Unbelievable. 
Ryan Nyquist able to deliver an incredible run, almost more comfortable rotating than sitting still. That run was on the verge of disaster the entire time. And the run, we're gonna go to the replay, but it had so much symmetry, so many complimentary tricks being performed back to back. It's incredible how he just consistently can settle the nerves and power through. That 720, he had a huge crash on in practice, but stomps it when the pressure is on. The backflip one-handed X up right into the double truck driver. He doesn't catch the bars in between, he just flings them and lets them rip. The 361 handed X up into another duck double truck driver doing that on the step down this time. Incredible. <laughs> Ryan Nyquist, let's check in with Tina Dixon. Yeah, thanks guys. And Ryan, you told me last year that that was one of the biggest and scariest runs that you have ever done. Well, how would you rate what you just did? Um, kind of scary. It's always nice when you're at the bottom and it's like hindsight, but when you're going through it, you're terrified, man. You're just just hitting each hit and hoping you land it. So to come down here first go, especially after last year and not making it. So I'm progressing, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, there's a couple areas where you can clean it up. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I uh, had some bobbles out there, a little couple rough landings, but uh, I mean, like I said, psyched. I made it down, did some ad living, you know, through the run. So hopefully run two, I can improve. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Ryan. Guys. Thanks, Tina. You know, we talk about the personal goals, this, the small milestones these riders set for themselves as scores come in for Ryan Nyquist in 82.6. Nyquist catapults into second, <laughs> just behind Brandon Semenik. So this being the fourth stop of the Crankworks World Tour, we talk about the implications of the overall title. And leading the charge, the young Swede, Emil Johansson, followed by Rogatkin and Lemoyne in third. Uh, all the pressure right now on Johansson and Rogatkin in terms of the contenders here that are in the mix to get that overall title. That really is testament to how well you do throughout versus just on one day of competition. And how about that guy we yeah. just saw drop in? Maybe he hasn't got a podium at a Crankwork Slope Style event yet, but he's always all about the overall, sitting in fourth place, and that run's gonna help him potentially bump his way up. So one word is always used when we're talking about this individual, Simon Godziak, extension, uh, known for just pulling, holding, and really executing his tricks with authority. As uh, we know, it's all about his backflip. So take a look at this. In homage to Dave Watson years and years ago who flipped over the, Pel the Peloton in the Tour de France. This time Simon Godziak grabs a road bike, throws on some spandex, and flips over the Peloton in a road race in Poland. <laughs> this thing absolutely went viral on the internet. This yeah. guy is such a showman. Uh, and thankfully uh, he has opted not to wear the jersey here today, just he, out of respect to free riding. Almost opted not to wear clothes <laughs> yeah. either. It's pretty no. cold out here today, but this guy going sleeveless, yeah. he's an animal. The guns are at the established veteran. Recently became a father, as we noted, on the European leg as he drops in. A true contender dropping in. Simon Godziak, run number one. Having the best season of his career and representing something that's so important to this sport of slopestyle mountain biking right now is creativity and uniqueness. A backflip Superman seat grab, huge extension on that step up. Look for some very different tricks out of this guy. Backflip bar spin to tuck no hander. Oh yeah, the Superman extended with the body horizontal, the bike vertical, a double tail up on the following feature. He's got all those technical bangers, but then he has those tricks that nobody else is doing. A 360 double bar spin down the step down just to get some technicality, but a Superman oh. seat grab. Oh no, missing the pedals and going down. Godziak holding on to that to the last second. Now but that you could see where that run was building. It definitely would have put him close to podium position. It was really Definitely shaping building. up and it had those tricks that yeah. you see a lot of the other riders doing, but then it was being balanced out by those tricks that you would only see from Simon Godziak. Those tricks, you don't see riders doing those and there's a couple reasons. One of them is Superman C grab off something like a cannon. It's tough to do because you're very vulnerable to wind. I'm not sure if it's blowing around out there or if he just happened to miss his pedals, but we're gonna take a look back at the replays. Look at the extension. The body absolutely horizontal. That's where you want him on that trick, the backflip Superman seat grab. 
then doing the back flip bar spin to tuck down hander, which is something that you got to have out here in 2017. Here's where it went wrong. He landed low and just couldn't absorb the impact. You see he's riding that hardtail, not a full suspension bike. A full suspension bike could have come in handy right there. So, Gatsyuk, it'll be all or nothing on run number two. Grabbed a third in Leger and a fourth, just outside of the top three at Crankworks Innsbruck. So, we know that there is way more <laughs> in the tank left for him as he'll head back to the top. And judges definitely having their work cut out for him. A great shot of the course here in Whistler, BC at Crankworks Whistler, Red Bull Joyride as it is standing room only. Fans from around the world have made the yearly pilgrimage to see the best in the world do battle here at the fourth and final stop of the Crankworks World Tour. And Thomas Lemoyne out of Marseille, France, the 20-year-old trying to find success, was able to crack into the top five in Rotorua this year. And the good news for him, he is starting to up his trick level, and that's exactly what it takes here at Joyride to find success. And it's been paying off. He got on the podium at the last stop of the Crankworx Slopestyle World Tour in Innsbruck, and the start of this run is looking like he's aiming for that again here. Huge combos, a 360 tuck no hander to bar spin, a backflip tuck no hander to bar spin, so definitely playing toward his strengths right now. He's a rider we know to have incredible style with tricks like that. Alley oop 270 inward table, almost like an unturned down. Tuck no hander to bar spin up. 360 double bar spin down. Notice never taking pedals in between features. Very efficient with where he puts that bike. Now to round out this run, he needs something big off of the Kokanee cabin. A 360 down oh. smooth run <laughs> for Thomas Lemoyne. Pure French flow for Lemoyne. has to be happy with that first of two runs. Some of uh, those combos, yeah. the amount of tricks that he was squeezing in on each of those wood to dirt trick features, looking forward to this replay, being able to count how many times he had a variation of bar spins and tuck no handers. Stuff like this, 360, tuck no hander, and when you think he's done, he chucks the bars, always with composure at the beginning of the airtime, at the end of the airtime, he can always sneak in an extra bar spin or a tail whip. Now right here, the bar spin to tuck no hander, I think that was an improvisation. That jump can be a little bit more difficult to clear than a lot of the other features on the course. A bar spin to tuck no hander. And then here it was, the cabin, 360 inward table. A couple things that were a little bit repeat repetitive from earlier on in the run. And we're gonna be seeing riders doing bigger moves than just a regular 360 down there. But judging by yeah. how many riders haven't completed runs, that's probably gonna sit him pretty nice. Well, barring a few of the repeats, uh, let's remind everyone too, in between, seamlessly smooth in between features. So as we await the scores. Anybody craving cotton candy right now? <laughs> scores coming in for Lemoyne, a 79.6, so into third place position. We'll have to see if it can hold as we still have more riders to drop in on their first of two runs as we get towards our top qualifiers. Top seated riders still to come. And it has been an incredible year. A challenging season at best for Tommy G. Thomas Janone, the Belgian rider, about to drop in. Known for his uh, smooth, quiet approach. We caught up with Tommy G earlier. I think I, I came back to competing way too fast. I should have uh, maybe skipped uh, Leger and Innsbruck, but it is what it is, and I'm happy that I, I won there because now I uh, have a little bit more confidence. You know, I, I took a few crash, and I and I am not too scared to crash uh, again, and uh, I think that's good for riding. And confidence is key when you're talking, talking about finding success at Red Bull Joyride. That's exactly what you need. He's no stranger to the top of the podium here. But the question is, as Tommy G worked out all the cobwebs, it sounds like he has when you talk with him. I spoke with him earlier this week, and he said, I'm definitely in the best headspace I've been in in a while. Well, I think in the offseason, he was tired of being the king of consistency. He wanted to have some bangers. With those bangers comes 
more danger to learn them. So he got hurt in the off season, but he's back to full strength right now. And look at that, 360 bar spin to tail whip and right into a double tail. Expect to see tricks with huge style like that flat spin 360 table, but also bangers like that cash roll. Oh, oh no, under rotating, blowing out the back tire. Oh, that's the trick that took him out in the off season. He's been working so hard on having that ready for this event here. He was doing it in practice, but it didn't come together. The three months with no riding, coming back maybe precariously a, a bit too soon and to have that on his first of two runs, obviously disappointment for Janone. Was starting to get into that, that classic Tommy G style. And that's exactly yeah. what gets him in the top spots in the past. 360 tables complemented by tricks that are banger, like that 360 bar spin to table. But I'm looking forward to just savoring the extension on that three table. A lot of the riders say it's their favorite trick to watch. All right, stop right here. This bike is absolutely inverted. Hard to tell from this angle, but if you're one of these smiley faces right here, you're looking at how incredibly flat this bike is. All right, roll it. It puts a smile on the face of the crowd. Also, all the riders in the field, but this cash roll, what an incredible angle. And look at that pack, back tire. Yeah. Just under rotate, About too much for that bead to hold on to, blew out. Man, what? that was exactly what he needed to do to play toward his strengths and take that new strategy he has of mixing stylish tricks with ones that are absolutely jaw dropping. What a what a difference 45 degrees can make sometimes. So Tommy G takes the long hike back up to the top for his second run. Uh, as we look at the Crankworx Slope Style World Tour standings coming to this, the fourth and final stop. Emil Johansson on top. Nikolai Rogatkin in second. And Lemoyne in third. Yeah, Which having that World Tour overall at stake is so exciting because sometimes we're only looking at those top three finishes but this is the war, every event is a battle, and Emilio Hansen absolutely leading the war right now, but your score each run at all four stops is what gets added up to that overall, so he needs something huge here if he wants to take it. At stake for Johansson right now, the overall Crankworks World Tour title. A rider who's only been on this World Tour for a year and still never outside the top five. Backflip tail up to bar spin, 360 bar spin, a downside tail up, dropping a foot but getting back on. Fortunately, this jump you have ample speed for. Cork 720, linking it into a backflip bar spin, a tuck no hander, completely going back to the drawing board compared to what he'd been practicing. An opposite bar spin to tail up on the hip into the whale tail. Bar spin to bar spin back. 360 tail whip, cannot stress how hard it is to do that trick on a lip down feature. But this kid just has a way of making everything look easy not over-rotating like you see a lot of riders do on that cannon. One last feature, a double bar spin up. A truck driver down, and he stomps it. Johansson definitely intends to put his name in the mix. Trying to surpass Brandon Semenuk in the top spot right now. At stake for him, the overall Crankworks World Tour title as well as claiming a potential Red Bull Joyride victory. Well, there's definitely yeah. going to be a respectable yeah. high number next to his name once the judges make their decisions there, and that's what he needs to hold down the lead in the overall, but obviously hoping to get on this podium as well. We've always talked about how calm and relaxed he normally is. He definitely had a little bit more intensity dropping in today. Honestly, he yeah. looked a little bit rattled this morning when we talked to him yeah. on the headset. I was a little bit worried for him because of the struggles he was having on the second jump in the four pack. He's had this Cork 720 on lockdown all week, but right here, he's been doing a different trick on this feature every run. This morning's practice, he was crashing all of those options. So going back to the drawing board, choosing a new trick, knowing that he had such strong features on all, such strong tricks on all the other features and always having the ability to link them together. Well, the Brigadier General of the Youth Brigade uh, definitely leading the charge as judges really trying to calculate, quantify what we just witnessed. Right now, we send it down to Tina Dixon. For Emil, we talked to you earlier and you said that you hadn't quite figured out your run. So at what point did you figure it out? Uh, most parts, I would say, like, I've been nervous for not making it down first run. So 
Happy to be here. You know, we saw a lot of conservative runs earlier, but you didn't seem very conservative out there. Uh, trying to keep myself calm. And you're very good at that, guys, keeping himself calm. Thanks, Emil. Well, hopefully uh, the combination of being calm, collected, and then executing runs like that, hopefully that's exactly going to be the, uh, the recipe for success as scores coming in. For Johansson, 86.8 oh. just shy of Brandon Semenuk. So Brandon Semenuk still sitting on top with two more riders yet to go with their first of two runs where its best run counts. It's standing room only here at Red Bull Joyride. And Brandon Semenuk, he laid it down in the dirt. The official line drawn an 89.8. Can it stick? Johansson just came close with an 86.8. Two more riders will have their first of two runs to tell the tell. So Nikolai Rogatkin, known for his revolutionary approach, our only triple crown contender. We were fortunate enough to catch up with Nikolai Rogatkin earlier today to talk, him about, to, to, talk to him about in Peking. Early morning race day. The contest starts at 10.30, so we're all eager to get out there. You know, there's, there's excitement there. Because the big day, you know, it's finally arrived. There's obviously nerves involved already, but you know, you're saying to yourself, you know, today's the big day, you know, today's the biggest contest of the year, you know. You have your run in mind, but then there's the added pressure, you know, the expectation of can they win it this year? Can I secure the number one spot? We're all in the zone, taking everything in. There's so many nerves there already because, you know, the big day is here. Just a couple hours before you gotta go out and try to show your biggest tricks. So I encourage everyone at uh, the culmination of today's event, be sure to go to RedBullTV.com. It's a, a clip from Peking, which followed Rogatkin last year, leading in to Red Bull Joyride. And you really get to know just what makes Rogatkin tick. Here we go. Triple crown title at stake for Rogatkin. After a huge season at the first three stops, and a tough one here last year, he's starting this run off with a bang, a triple tail whip on the step of a 360 tail up on the hip. This is where he's gonna shine. The cash roll on the first jump lands perfect, getting a pedal in. The oh. twister! <laughs> wow, the front cork 1080 right after the cash roll. A front flip, tucked on hander on the hip. So difficult to do on a hipped feature. Tucked on hander up, what's he gonna get on the step down out? Back flip, bar spin. Nikolai Rogatkin, can he secure the triple crown? The home stretch for Rogatkin. Oh, a double whip yeah. on the cannon. Barely coming up short, but holding on. The wind oh. getting the best of him. Going off course with Nikolai Rogatkin, 98% of a run in the bag going down. With one feature to go, Rogatkin was coming in like a batarang. Well, if oh. you know Nikolai Rogatkin, you know he does it for the crowd. He feeds off of the energy that these people are giving him right now, and he'll always finish his run if his bike is in one piece. You cannot hear yourself think right now here at the base of Whistler as this crowd getting behind the American, Rogatkin, the only triple crown contender, and up to that point, a definite cha challenger to what Brandon Semenuk laid down in his first run. Oh, it's such a oh. shame, but you know what's great is how much of a showman this kid is. And doing this last year was what secured him the FMB World Tour overall. He finished his run even after a crash for the points. A front flip up, straight air down. Oh, oh no, another crash. Oh, the crowd cheering for him. Hopefully he's all right. Two tough get-offs in this run for Nikolai Rogatkin. Medical staff taking a look at him. He may so, just well, be disappointed, but that was a yeah. big crash. Let's take a look back. 
While staff, yeah, while staff is attending to Rogatkin, let's take a look back at what was starting to be an incredible run for Rogatkin. I mean, we haven't seen this link before. The cash roll right into a sprint into the next jump to get the front court 1080. That jump is the hardest jump to clear on the course, yet he's doing his most difficult trick on it. Of course, he had the triple tail up, up top, linking it right into the 360 tail, over spinning on that left hip. This kid is a gladiator. Incredible, the tenacity and just the confidence that he brings into those runs. And I mentioned the Red Bull peaking episode. When you watch that, you see how much he, he realizes is at stake with every run and how much he wants to put into it. He, he feels he owes a lot to the sacrifices his parents made and everything he's done from such a young age, you, you watch and you see, he's been on a BMX bike since you know, you know four years, five years old. And all he knows is two wheels and it's incredible to see him when just leading up to which was gonna be one of the best runs we have seen in Joyride history. Yeah, you know, if you watch that episode of Peaking, you notice one thing about this kid is that in a high pressure situation like this, sometimes he fails, but he always gets back up. He has the most positive mindset. And I know if he's in one piece, he'll be back up there. Let's listen in. So trying to listen in, you can see the, just the visible disappointment from Okatkin. Just that scene we're looking at right there, Max Fredrickson, who broke his collarbone just this morning, getting ready for these finals. Nikolai Rogatkin, the guy with so much pressure on his shoulders, pressure that we saw crumple Brett Reeder just two years ago when he was the first rider with the opportunity to win that coveted Triple Crown. And that has made things a little less pressure intensive for this gentleman, the defending champ, the forever focused, Brett Reeder, found magic here at Joyride last year. Can he do it again? If he does, he'll definitely spoil the charge that Rogatkin's going after a Triple Crown. It has to be all or nothing for Rogatkin when he comes back. Remember, Reader still has to contend with Brandon Semenik, and there's been some great back and forth over the years between those two. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking Nikolai versus Brett, but this is what a yeah. few years ago looked like. It was all about Brandon and Brett at every competition. So the old rivals squaring off face to face yet again. The half oh. cap variation, <laughs> getting the bar spin, 180 before the takeoff, and then 180 to get back to straight, but throwing in the bar spin. We saw Brandon Semenik do it. But Brett Reeder adding the variation. He has the opposite Quark 720 on the hip. The regular Quark 720 on the first jump in the four pack. A backflip double tail. Oh. I thought he was throwing that away. Perfect to the pedals. An opposite oh, no. tail lip goes sour. <sighs> Brett Reeder goes down. Reeder hanging on to the last second. And another throwaway run for Ryder where so much was at stake. Crazy turn of events here, Pat. Yeah, we could not have written a script more dramatic, more climactic. And now Brandon Semenuk comfortably sits at top going into the second runs. I think this is exactly the way he wanted things to unfold. But leading into that, you saw that resurgent reader that we've seen this season, tapping into obviously the, the reader that comfortably gets on top of the podium. So we have to talk about the half cab bar spin. He does a 180 before the end of the ladder bridge drop, and then 180s to land straight, gets the bar spin in. Now here, I thought he was gonna throw it away on this backflip double tail, somehow sneaking around the last tail the last second. But on this feature, he's been doing an opposite double tail up on that hip. It looked like he was going for the single version of that right here, but got hung up in the rotation, couldn't get his leg over the bike. And Brett Reeder is going to put all the pressure on run number two to try to defend that title that he won here last year. Well, uh, a cocktail combination of uh, pressure <laughs> and performance. Uh, the one sitting on top, uh, the top shelf bar there, Brandon Semenuk, 89.8. And we were trying to get clairvoyant earlier, thinking about what is Brandon Semenuk going to bring to the table and how is he going to do it on first run? And would it be enough to stand uh, the, 
the, the hitting from all the other riders on their first runs. Well, he's the best in the biz. He's won here more than anybody. We're not used to seeing him start the competition, but we are used to seeing him in the top spot after run number one. A bunch of riders having troubles, but look at Brandon Semenuk, a guy who has had troubles out here in years past, but learning from all those experiences, the most experienced rider in the field today, almost throwing it away on that last feature. We usually see him get full extension on that backflip one-footed can-can, but still sitting in first place after all those riders, Brandon and, Semenuk. And it begs the question, what else does Brandon Semenuk have in store for his hometown crowd? Will he get a fifth Red Bull Joyride victory. Remember, second run still to come. It's the best of two runs. We'll find out if history can once, event, once again be made here at Red Bull Joyride. Stay with us, the second run still to come. Run number one, Brett Reeder dropping in. I honestly have butterflies right now. Backflip tail up on the cannon. One last feature, slipping a pedal. Works 725, spinning oh! lands it. Oh. It's Boy, the best run know. we've seen so far with the tiniest bobble. What are the judges going to do with this? Scores coming in oh! at 92.33. You are looking at your new leader. So for any of the viewers that were unfortunately not able to catch Reader's performance in Leger or Rogatkin in Innsbruck and Rotorua, fear not, the Red Bull TV analyzer puts you, the viewer, in the director's seat. You can share all the highlights, your favorite riders, via Facebook, Twitter, and more importantly, go back and watch the entire competition from start to finish. It's the Red Bull TV analyzer. And also want to remind all the viewers coming up September 2nd, 70,000 spectators come out in force on a course designed by Martin Soderstrom and Drew Besanson, the final of the FMB Diamond Series where the world champion will be crowned. It is Red Bull District Ride. That's from Nuremberg, September 2nd, only on Red Bull TV. Welcome back everyone to Crankworks Whistler, the fourth of four stops of the Crankworks World Tour here at Red Bull Joyride. And as you can see, once again, as anticipated, a capacity crowd treated to the best the sport has to offer. And we've uh, been treated to uh, something we never anticipated. Brandon Semina coming out of the gates on his first of two runs, an 89.8. That score, shockingly, has held the top spot with no rider able to eclipse it and it's leaving us all a little slack-jawed. We had high expectations of Brandon Semenuk, but it has been dramatic. How's it going, everyone? Pat Parnell, honored to be joined. Martin Soderstrom, Cam Zink, uh, welcome to the booth. Uh, let's kind of let this marinate, as we always do, and uh, digest, uh, but before we get to the first of two runs, I want to talk about the whole progression versus style. It seems like it's this debate that keeps uh, kind of welling up at each of these stops. I think it's like any sport, there's like on a long enough timeline, all that progression will kind of fizzle out because 
it'll, it'll plateau. So the newer tricks just become another trick. So then, like we see with Simon, Simon Godziak yeah. doing Back to the Supermans and the Superman Sea Crabs, which Cam here was doing back in the day, years ago. And, it, and now it's still relevant because it's different and it's stylish. And, uh, and, and I think style will always prevail, going big will always prevail, but those, uh, those new tricks are hot for a moment, but then they'll plateau after a while. Yeah, and I think technical tricks are crucial. I mean, I would be way more worried about the sport if we only went towards more spinning, more flipping. It's like, I really like the way that the sport also evolves with like, because you need a lot of bike control and skills to do a technical run. We always say sometimes less is more. When you see Tommy G do a three, I mean, there's these classics that just never go out of style, right? Kind of like, kind of like Danny Davis and snowboarding, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> foregoing the triple corks here and there to do a, a, an amazing switch method, and uh, and it shows that it's hard but stylish. I think we're exactly. in a perfect time where it's kind of like you guys said, it's catching up to the point where people are able to do some of the tough tricks with style, but then also some of the tricks that were brand new last year, it's more about how you do them this year. And you saw Brandon Semenuk take that opposite cork 720, something that we haven't seen him do before. Were you guys expecting that out of him? I wasn't, but you can't, the only thing you can expect out of that guy is that he's got everything. You can only assume that he has everything, and you're just waiting to see him unfold it. There, there's you cannot assume that there's any chink in his armor. Like and he doesn't hold, he doesn't show his cards, and he's the perfect competitor. But dude, yeah. that's the craziest part, though, <laughs> to stay at home the whole year and then yeah. come out here and stomp the first round out of everyone. Yeah. I mean, that mental game oh, is just he, so impressive. He's an enigma, and he's winning. And he's currently <laughs> sitting on, on top of the leaderboard right now. Right now, let's uh, check in with Tina Dixon. Tina? Thanks, guys. Yeah, something to point out. So. Brandon Semenek, he came down after that run and he was actually stressing, even though he's our current leader, because he did a new trick on that final feature. He basically took his leg through his hands over the handlebars, and I was asking the guys down here, and Tom Van Steenbergen said they're calling it a flip candy bar. So look for that trick on the final feature. It is brand new, no one's ever done that. But also look for Nikolai Rogatkin to step things up, guys. I just spoke to him, he is mad. He is frustrated, nearly did his entire run. So he's gonna use that as a motiv motivating factor, and you can't count out Brett Reeder, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tina. So Brett Reeder, obviously the defending champ, trying to find success here, but it's all about Rogatkin. And I, let's talk about Rogatkin. When he, when he gets angry, when he taps into that inner fury, what kind of fireworks can we expect on run number two? He knows what's at stake. He'll be the only person ever to seal a Triple Crown title. It's, it's just a big <laughs> ball of testosterone and Russian-American <laughs> fury every run. He has yeah. a total different riding style than anyone else, and he doesn't have the technicality of the switch and oppo and, and, and traditionally the stylish, but he makes up for it with the 1080s and, and, uh, and just a completely different way of attacking the course. Yeah, yeah dude. I'd say every time I show up to a course, I'm like... Too bad for Nikolai. This is not maybe gonna be a course for him because you used to say that to me too. <laughs> <laughs> that's never, what he's trying yeah, to get in your never. head. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, and that's the thing. He, yeah, as Cam said, he doesn't really need those like super technical. Or I mean, actually, you could see there that maybe he should have been practicing a little bit more on that bar spin, which was such a bummer. But. I'm happy to see that he's uh, that he's fine, and I think he's really gonna kill it yeah. in the second one. I think that was mainly the wind to blame. You know, that's uh, that's another factor we're throwing in there. A uh, few riders getting taken out, especially like Simon. He's he's opting to actually stick to his core identity, his core riding style of Supermans and whatnot, which are horrible for the wind. But he wants to ride his own his own run, and he doesn't want to succumb to just doing bar spins because he could have he could have tail whipped that or something, or he could have done it. He could have spun it. Yeah. But it's uh, the wind is the wind's a tough obstacle. We make so much focus on these guys leading for titles, and but we also mentioned that there's those personal milestones. Let's talk about Matt Jones for a little bit. I mean, the, he he needed a strong finish. I mean, leading up to this, this was not his season or the previous. No, exactly, <laughs> dude. I think that was a huge stone that dropped from his chest and yeah. from his mind and everything. And I, I think this could be really good for him going into the second round as well. Now he knows that he have a run, he gets some FAB points, which is really important yeah. for the whole Diamond Series. And uh, yeah, I think he's just um, very it, relieved right now. This, yeah, this is years of injuries. I, I met this kid, one of the nicest kids you'll ever meet. So it's not karma dealing with him. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's just unfortunate luck of getting caught in the injury circle for year after year. And, and he just showed it there. He laid down a fairly reasonable run, but really smooth. Show, you know, we all know how good of a rider he was, but that was definitely his conservative side. Quite a few straight yeah. flips, even though they're off the flat drops and whatnot. But he's, uh, 
He's got one in the tank. Yeah. He's going to stay on tour because now it's becoming like surfing where if you fall off tour, it's going to be an uphill battle yeah. to get back on. And, and we've seen numerous riders like Carson Storch fall off of it. And now he's not even here. So I think that was the right move. Played it conservative, really smooth, and next year, next run he's going to be able to unleash. And not blow a tire, right? Je yeah. Oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's glued that beat on or something, but whatever he's doing, he needs to just keep on going because finally got to see him cross the finish line. That felt good to all of us. Yeah. Well, you could Absolutely. Couldn't. It, it couldn't happen to a better kid, and I think uh, he has just as many tricks as anyone else. So for the next runs, I think he's going to have a, you know, a nice little, little you know, chip off his shoulder to where he can actually yeah. just... Just let it go. Yeah. Well, do, do we have some time that I could talk about Emil? Just yeah. quickly? Oh, yeah. Can you Dude, that's, I'm so impressed by that guy. I get like goosebumps just thinking about it. He's yeah. leading the FMB World Tour. He's at the biggest event of the year. He got a Red Bull helmet two days ago. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to face him. He's just standing up there, just the same, and just throwing down he, the most he, insane He laid run. down a heater in chill mode. He yeah. was just <laughs> like, he looked like it was just another practice run. I saw him three whipped out of that whale tail yesterday about six times in about 10 minutes. And I don't even know how he's even getting runs that much, let alone keeping the stamina yeah. to go. And then a trick that like four people have ever done, ever out of a whale tail, to pedals each time, just cruising. And, and now again, yeah. he has a solid run. He's probably locked up the world tour for as far as the Crankworx tour. And he's just gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna see some magic happen, dude. And he got some more. I'm telling you that. Right. I'm riding with that guy every day, and he's full of surprises. All right. Well, it's uh, official. The Swedish mountain biking mafia uh, is back in the mix. We'll have to see if uh, Johansson what he's gonna bring to run number two when we come back. The second runs here from Red Bull Joyride 2017, the final stop of the Crankworks World Tour. We'll see if Johansson can continue the magic. In run number two, can Brandon Seminick hold on to the top spot? Can Reeder go back to back? And can Rogakin become the first ever Triple Crown winner? We're about to find out.
show that we're about to witness. Perhaps history. Back okay. this kid in a corner and then look out. Second feature of the course. Front court 1080. He calls it the twister. Triple tail up on the second jump. A double tail up down. This he is needs it. to stop this. Oh! A cash no. roll tail whip straight to Pottenhoff. Rogakin oh. makes history oh, here in Innsbruck. You're kidding me. What a tumultuous season it has been for the Crankworks World Tour as we took a quick look back at the European leg and some crazy back and forth, but it's here at the culmination of the season. Red Bull Joyride, the fourth and final stop that we are seeing that drama continue. Brandon Semenuk laid down the gauntlet on the first of two runs and Red Bull Joyride is about to get back underway right now. And there is the man leading the charge, Brandon Semenuk, as we take a look from above. Just a quick two hour drive north of Vancouver sits the picturesque village of Whistler, Canada here in BC, home to more riding than anyone could ever really get <laughs> under their belts. Well, one week, two weeks, so much incredible riding and we are proud to be back once again here at Whistler, BC for Red Bull Joyride. As we look at our start list, we re-rack the order based on how the riders did on their first runs, and that's where things really get interesting. Yeah, yeah now we're back into familiar territory with Brandon Semenek dropping in as the last rider, but it's gonna be really exciting. We're gonna start this run off again like we started the first run because we're gonna have top riders who did not complete their runs going relatively early in the field for run number two. So what do you, what do you make of everything that we witnessed? I mean, the amount of kind of uh, riders that they, we felt like they were right there. They were so close. I mean, do you, what do you account it uh, to? Uh, nerves, uh, just conditions. There's a little bit of wind, but... I'll tell you yeah. what, after yeah. three events on this year's World Tour, you get into the mindset that you think you know what to expect, but when you show up in Whistler, this event is an anomaly. This is where it all started. The crowd is bigger. The pressure is more immense, and you're seeing Brandon Semenek, the guy who's done it here four times, rising to the surface, but these riders, an opportunity right now, one more run to make their mark and knock him off of the throne that he's so comfortably sitting in. And you're looking at a Canadian that a lot of people, it's surprising when you say this, but has yet to find the podium at a Crankworks event. Logan Pete drops in on a second and final run. And Logan Pete, his strength is fluidity. We saw him falter in run number one. Uncharacteristically, he's looking smooth right now. We saw him a few weeks ago in an event in Colorado really jump outside of his comfort level. So if he's going to do that again, now is the right time. A backflip, tail whip, leading right into a 360 tail whip. Always catching pedals early. A 720 oh. over spinning yeah. on that right hand hip. Spinning in a clockwise direction. Missing the trick up into the Whale tail, but getting that opposite 360 down may look like he didn't get a variation, but he's doing it in his unnatural direction and now balancing things out with a regular 360 off of the cannon. Now the kokanee box, the last feature yeah. on the course. Logan oh. Pete missing a trick off. I mean, it's a yeah. top to bottom run, but missing the last feature on the course is definitely going to hurt him. Now he has a textbook bike control, so smooth, such good style, but with a missed trick. Definitely going to be hard to challenge. That on-off box yeah. comes up so quickly. As soon as you landed the step up, you're already having to pop into your trick that you're going to do off of the drop. Let's roll back into a replay of this run and savor some of the highlights. Look how early he catches his pedals on that backflip tail up, links it right into a 360 tail up. Not pedaling between features, opting instead to get off the rear end of the bike, pump for speed, and then fling into that 720. Now a couple missed tricks here. He didn't get a trick into the whale tail. He didn't get a trick off of the final drop. But everything else, very solid. And what we would expect from Logan Pete 
It's good to see him getting a run top to bottom after messing up run number one. So Logan Pete, he knows with that missed trick, it's going to be difficult to get the numbers needed. However, you pointed out some, uh, some great moments sprinkled throughout that run. Uh, a 58.8, the best he'll be able to do is eighth place. But a rider's favorite, able to get in a solid run as we get right back to the top, as we continue with the second runs where best run counts. Torquato Testa, one of two Italians in the hunt today here at Red Bull Joyride, a second in Rotorua. Let's see if he can shake off Leger and focus on the task at hand. Torquato Testa needs the double backflip. He's going for it again. Can he slow down the rotation? Yes. He does. He times that absolutely perfectly. Links it into the tuck, no hander. I know he's looking for more on that, but with how many riders have been messing up, he needs to just put that out of his mind and stomp all the rest of the tricks in this run. The 450, his natural direction on that hip, roosting out of the berm into this whale tail. Tuck, no hander up, coming up a little short, grabbing a pedal. Oh! Oh, not enough speed to flip out of the whale tail. Tough digger for Torquato Testa. And you can see him trying to get a, a pedal in. Really unfortunate for Turquato Testa going down hard, coming off the feature after the whale tail. And it's uh, those difficult moments when you have to decide, am I gonna, <laughs> gonna chop so, some wood? Am I gonna try to get a pedal in? It's so hey, hard to link all these yeah. features. It's easy for the train to get derailed, especially on the whale tail. We have the medical staff at attending to Torquato Testa right now. We're gonna take this time to look back at a replay of his run, starting out great. I'm sure this was the main thing on his mind was fixing the mistake he had in run number one by rotating that double backflip a little bit slower. He did it. He was linking tricks like that backflip tuck no hander right into that backflip tail whip. And things were looking strong until he cased. He came up short going into the whale tail, tried to recover by grabbing a pedal in there but there's only like a bike length and a half to try to generate enough speed. And you need more speed to backflip out of that step down feature than you would to just straight air it. So not enough. Just goes yeah. to show how much he was going for it with only that last yeah. opportunity. Instead of straight airing out, he was still going for the flip. That side view definitely you saw, you saw just how big that gap is. I mean, he was formerly known for that volatility factor of uh, just always Sending it, but a, a more calculated Torquato. Disappointment for him. Oh, yeah. a look at Brett Reader yeah. right there, looking focused. Well, trying to find what he needs to get it done here up top as we get ready for our next run. You can see just a packed house. Here we go, run number two. So Medi Ghani yeah. with trouble in his first run as well, starting things off with that truck driver. Remember, it was the third feature of the course that took him out. He gets the backflip tail clean again. He's going for the cork seven. Again oh. this time, an identical crash to run number one. I almost felt like that was a replay. Well, you were breaking down the transition on that jump in particular. You know, some of these riders ha having difficulty gauging it. What, what makes it so unique? On that feature, yeah. the second feature on the course where he did the backflip tail up, that's one that you can really take to the moon. It looked like he drifted a little bit to the right, possibly landed in the soft stuff. And when you land on a part of the landing that may not be as hard packed, that could take away a little bit of speed. But honestly, it's splitting hairs. It looked like he landed perfect enough to have the speed for that Quark 720. But coming up just as short as he did in run number one, just a big miscalculation, perhaps, for Medi Ghani. And that's uncharacteristic. You usually see him get at least one run in the bag at all the stops this season with well, some respectable results, a sixth place in Leger. Well, from a, from a veteran to a, a first-timer here at Joyride. BMX returned uh, mountain biker here for Joyride. Josh Holt, he has put in the good time as we talked about it. Uh, a weekend warrior, a journeyman of sorts. When he's not on a bike, he's working nine to five, trying to get things done. And you have to love that commitment. Uh, he has to want a solid top to bottom run here at oh, his first showing. Big time. A lot of these riders have the time to practice every single day. 
whenever they want. This guy's got three kids, a full-time job, somehow finds time to put runs together like this with huge extension on that Superman tail. This is where he had not enough speed in run number one, but he muscles through this time. The diesel engine of John oh! Hall <laughs> getting that front flip, tuck no hander. Oh, it was an opposite double tail up on the hip right there. Oh, Josh Holt just barely holding on right now. A little bit shaky on the whale tail, but holding things together, tricking all the features. A 360 off of the cannon. Oh, it would be great to see Josh Holt get a complete run in his first joyride appearance. Can he stop this 360? He does! Josh Holt, 33 years old, his first appearance and lays down the run he knew he had in him. Wow, wow. Josh Holt, this guy yeah. has been battling so hard. The riders are here for an entire week practicing. Big crashes yeah. for him, but putting it all together when it counts. Well, there's been so much talk about how much work Ryan Nyquist has put in to get to this spot, to make that transition from BMX. You made a good point that he's been in for even longer trying to get to this point. Right now, let's check in with Tina Dixon. Yeah, and Josh, going from top to bottom, your very first Red Bull Joyride. I mean, you have put the work in. When you came through that finish line, just describe that. Oh, man, it, it felt so good. I ended up obviously not getting the trick I wanted out of the first corner, but I'm just happy to get to the bottom. I mean, in an event like this, it's so gnarly, my first time ever being here. I'm just really pumped to be here. I'm really psyched to be at the bottom and psyched I was able to make a good showing for you guys. Could you have ever prepared for the crowd and the pressure that someone feels like at Red Bull Joyride? The crowds don't get to me so much. It's all my own self. I put a lot of pressure on myself because I want to ride well. I know I want the run that I want to do. And I want to do it for me. So it's, uh, it's hard to prepare for that, but it is what it is. Thanks, Josh. So a personal best for Josh Holt, obviously. Just getting here, just getting that invite is half the battle. Then to have a run like that, um, that's just the icing on the cake for Josh at this point. And I'll tell you, no the, matter trick where the numbers he was, land. trick he was looking for on that jump where he was only able to squeeze in the bar spin, he was doing double backflips on that feature during practice. So the established and successful BMX veteran making the switch to mountain bike. Uh, mountain bikes waiting for that score moves up to seventh place, the best he'll be able to do, 65.2. So a great first performance. We expect to see more of Josh Holt going into next season for sure. So right back to the top as we continue with the second runs. The riders still with the top score. Brandon Semenuk off that first run score just below the 90s with an 89 as Missouri trying to find all the components. This is fourth in the overall standings going into Innsbruck, trying to climb back out of the top five. There's that backflip tail up on the lip down version on that start feature. Definitely gonna score high. That's what we saw him doing in years past here when he's done well. When there was a lip down at the bottom of the course, here's where it all went wrong in run number one. Stomps it this time. It was a strange mistake in run number one. But linking it yes. into the cast roll. Huh. Anthony pulling that one out every once in a while in competition. Now a new trick for him this year. He's been working hard in the offseason to add that to his repertoire. A backflip bar spin down out of the whale tail. This is the Anthony we recognize right here. Smooth oh. double <laughs> tail whip off of the cannon. Oh, knowing he has to lay it all on the line. His last opportunity to get a result of 360 a massive moment for Missouri. A run that all of the riders, all the fans knew he had. Oh, so good to see. Last year we saw him do a great run and then crash on the 360 on the last drop. I was hoping that wasn't gonna happen again. He learned from his mistakes. It's gonna be a solid result for this kid who's becoming more and more consistent on this world tour. Cleared out any cobwebs that were there from the first run and improved steadfastly on run number two. Looking back on Missouri's run. So starting really strong. The only guy out there right now doing the backflip tail up today off of that lip down option. But definitely the highlight of the run for Anthony was that cash roll there. And then probably one of the highest scoring elements to this run was the double tail up down the cannon. The feature we've talked about saying that it's the most difficult feature to judge your speed for. And a double tail up 
It's a trick that's tough to do in the wind. It's tough to do on a step down feature. Pulling it all out when it counts here. And this is where things get interesting too, numbers wise, as we get into these second runs. Obviously, Brandon Semenuk, very hard to calibrate those numbers being that first run. And we expect uh, definitely some one-upmanship with each of these second runs where best run counts. Naziri on pins and needles right now. So great to see when you, you look at how much work he has put in to his regiment, so focused this year and uh, hoping to find some dividends. Scores coming in for Anthony Maziri, run number two. And 84.2, he moves into podium position, <laughs> third place. Look at that smile on yes. his face after sitting up there knowing that he blew his first run. Now sitting in podium position, that's gotta feel great. But a precarious position at best because the rest of the field are about to drop in as former winner Tommy G. A surprising fall as well, what he has to do and get past that moment in the run. And we look at the upcoming riders, Reeder, Godzia, Kavrasazi, Rogatkin, Schultz. I mean, you name it, any of these people. Well, we just upset. saw Anthony Missouri land that casserole on the same jump that we saw Thomas Janon blow his rear tire out on in run number one, landing slightly sideways. So that's definitely weighing heavy on his mind right now because he was absolute perfection all the way up until that point. Having to stomp all the tricks now just to get back there with the opportunity to fix that mistake. Huge combos already, and just as good of extension on that 360 table. Can he get the cash roll? Oh, oh no! Over rotation this time, over correcting. Oh, a tough fall for Thomas Janon. So Tommy G battling with injuries this past season. It's the last thing you want to see. Well, it's tough to see anybody go down, but especially Tommy G, a guy who's worked so hard to up his game. In order to get that trick, he broke his ankle, had to recover all of the offseason, fight back to where he was, and then try to be able to land that trick here at Joyride. And he talks about the clarity uh, that this comeback has been for him, having the time off, not riding, but he was well on his way. There's that flat spin 360 table again. He gets. Almost too much speed into this second jump of the four pack. Goes for the cast roll. Try not to under rotate like he did in run number one, but being so efficient on his landing on the jump right before it, goes a little bit further than he was expecting. Adds a little bit too much rotation. Tough break for Tommy G. Good to see uh, Janone able to walk off, but just to Reset what's at stake and where the numbers sit and what every rider has to do. 89.8 held by Brandon Semenik. It happened on our first run as we kick things off this morning. Well, we've been looking at this run all day, but right now we have another little piece of information from Tina when we had a report from her. She was saying that that last trick off of the flat drop was not the backflip one-footed can-can that we've come to expect from Brandon Semenuk. It looked like it was, but we were saying, oh, the extension wasn't as big as what we normally see. It sounds like he was taking his foot, instead of putting it over the top tube, he was putting it through the handlebars, and there it is, stop yeah. right there. Now take a look, that foot is going through the handlebars, not over the top tube. All right, roll the footage. He gets a little bit sideways, probably because that's a brand new world's first trick and Brandon Semenuk makes it a habit of saving those surprises for this moment here in front of this crowd. So now, now the big question is though, what is the rest of the field going to do and going to have to perform on their second runs? You can see the focused gentleman right there, the defending champ, Brett Reeder. Lot of lot of discussion on what he's holding back. Uh, one of those riders too that kind of will hold his cards close to his chest and then unveil it. The big question, can he get it done? Here we go, defending champ, reader, everything on the line as he drops in. The 180, the half cap. He gets the half cap, which is groundbreaking on its own because there's only two riders doing it, but he does miss the barsman that we saw him show in run number one. But he gets something that he missed in run number one. Oh, oh no, the Oppo Quark 720. Blowing a foot, oh no. And with that, Reader's hopes to repeat a win here at Red Bull Joyride. 
dashed. Just like that. Oh man, see he had fixed a mistake that he had in run number one, but then messed up something that was absolutely flawless in his first go out here. Just going to show how each one of these 12 features, the tricks these guys are doing on it, it's like a best trick contest just 12 times in a row and anything can happen. Well, it definitely relieves a little pressure <laughs> for Rogatkin, Semenuk, and a few other riders that have their sights on the top spot and are within striking distance. As we head right back to the top, onward and forward. Look at the That's bloody a... arm of <laughs> Simon Godziak. <laughs> Guns are out, tank top ready to throw it down, and uh, so many fans here today excited to see what he's going to deliver. You never know. You talk about that unique individual approach, and the judges are definitely feeling his reinvigorated uh, commitment to his runs, putting everything he has in him. Even from run to run, he has a tendency to change things up, so you never know what to expect. Even bigger extension on the backflip, Superman Seagrab blowing a foot, but luckily holding on, he's back on track. Backflip bar spin to tuck, no hander. This man who's full of surprises getting huge extension on that Superman. A double tail whip. Now let's see if he can pull everything together. The run will be a combination of huge rotating variations and then huge extended tricks. This is where the run went bad in run number one. Is he gonna do the Superman seat grab again? He does oh. and he gets it this time. So he'll get good variety scores for that. Can he put it down into the finish corral? One last hit. Oh, flat flip down and he, he gets it. it. Simon Godzik comes swinging on his second run. With blood that, dripping from yeah. his elbow, putting <laughs> Run number one's mistakes behind him. And it's been incredible watching in this season, formerly with battle consistency, but it seems like that's the Godzik of the past. He's able to rise up in these pressure situations and really deliver the goods. Now right here, yeah. the second jump in the four pack, look at the extension, his feet pointing to the sky. It was almost past horizontal. And then the Superman seat grab off of the cannon, a trick that nobody else is doing out here, a trick almost from the past that you don't see many riders doing, but like Martin and Zink were saying, bringing tricks back is what the judges like to see because it shows variety. And Simon Godziak definitely taking a bit of a vintage modern approach to that run. Let's see if the judges will reward it. We love the vintage modern. <laughs> it's all about vintage modern. And what a year it's been for him. Third in Leger uh, at Leger Crankworks, a fourth just outside the podium in Innsbruck. So we'll have to see where the numbers sit. He. Uh, Definitely looks uh, content with what he laid on the line. Has to be proud of what he came with here at this year's Red Bull Joyride. Missing the first yeah. stop of the season because, well, he was having a baby, so yeah. he had good reason, but solid finishes. Sitting in eighth in the world ranking without even having as many yeah. opportunities to get points as all the other riders who hit every event. All right, scores coming in for Godziak. Will it push him into podium position? Top score still held by Brandon Semenuk. Readers, shockingly, wasn't able to better on his second run as scores coming in for Simon Godziak. A 78.4, not able to get into the top five. The best he'll be able to do is sixth place. But it was great to see Godziak able to get the flip on that final feature, and it is such the determining factor, leaving that indelible mark, and as we saw with Rogatkin earlier. I mean, this feature right here, there's nothing like it in the sport of mountain biking. It can make it, it can break you. Right there, Nikolai Rogatkin trying to finish that run that he'd already crashed on. That thing just ate him alive. Well, they call it the gatekeeper for a good reason. It has seen many things over the years here in Whistler. You don't have to like me. Hell, you can hate me if you want. But I do demand your respect. Feel like I've earned it. Because I've been around, seen a few things. Yeah, I think I get better looking as the years pass by, but I'm still as old as dirt. 
I might not know your name. Perhaps better if I don't. Because I don't play favorites. Ain't my game. Ain't my job. I don't care what you did 12 seconds ago or 12 months. Only matters what you do right now, the next few seconds. Get it wrong and I'll send you packing. Get it right and I'll make you a legend. <laughs> well, some good uh, good history right there. If that didn't put uh, kind of chicken skin on anyone out there, I'd be surprised. Yeah, that thing, that last feature <laughs> takes on its own personality. <laughs> but uh, the big question remains, the looming score of 89.8, it's holding on, shockingly. Brandon Semenuk still on top, but there's still more riders. Uh, this course, it's challenged the best in the world, and can the Italian, Diego Caversassi, find a little bit of the flow he had in Leger and make his way into the top three. Here we go. Diego Caverzasi in practice is doing stuff on this course that nobody else has even tried. He just needs to make it to those features at the bottom of the course. A backflip bar spin to tail whip. Things are looking good right here. A little bit of a missed trick, but he's got to keep his head on straight. Backflip tail on the first jump in the four pack, linking it into a front flip tuck, no hander. He looks composed, Pat. Yeah, very focused. Now I'm hoping he can make it to that cannon. He's got big plans. A bar spin up into the whale tail, a flip table down. All right, he's on track into the cannon. Diego Caverzazzi, will he pull it out? A front oh, flip bar spin! What? Whoa! <laughs> Never seen a front flip bar spin off a cannon before. He skipped the straight front flip and went straight for the jugular. And a flat flip down to finish it off. Caverzazzi with a one two punch. And the first oh. rider to take full. Full advantage of the O Canada cannon rail. Incredible for the Italian. And that's exactly what he knew he needed to have. You know, prior he's had this situation, a, a habit of making the, the, the highlight rail with sometimes the crashes, but the privateer, self made. Somebody out there sponsored this run. kid. He's got the guts to throw a front flip bar spin off a cannon. Now he probably was gonna do the straight front flip off that thing in run number one, but he never made it to that point. So I was thinking, come on Diego, just hold it together. But in order to get there, he had to do so many tricks. Linking things like that backflip bar spin to tail up, and then a backflip tail up, then the front flip tuck no hander, warming up for what was to come as he squared up into that cannon. Now let's take a look at where he took off from. All right, stop, check it out. His rear wheel is already off the ground. His head is looking forward to that landing as he throws all of his momentum forward. I was thinking, oh great, he's going for a front flip. Roll the footage. Then he tucks his knees into the seat, chucks the handlebars. He's cased that thing so many times in practice, but calculates it perfectly here in the finals when it counts the most, but it wouldn't have counted for anything unless he made it past the gatekeeper, and he did. And, and please emphasize just the blind factor on that, going off the, the cannon log, the fact that he was able to do that, the commitment with the bar spin and all, incredible. Obviously, Kavrasazi uh, tapping into everything he had to unleash to challenge the likes of Brandon Semenuk. Scores coming in, 81.6 will put him in fifth place. Happy with that performance. Great to so, see a top five out yep. of that kid. So it has been a massive day for so many, but for a handful of riders, some different things are at stake. For this gentleman right here, he sits on the precipice of history, potentially be the first rider ever to grab a Crankworks Triple Crown title. He needs everything that we have seen and more as he drops in. Rogatkin, here is his final chance. Can he do it? Well, this challenging course, probably challenging for Nikolai more so than anybody because he doesn't have the opposite tricks. He relies on bangers on every single oh. feature, like triple tail whipping, the step up, three whip, bobbling the pedals, but recovering nicely on the hip. Into the cash roll, he's gonna over rotate, no. blow out the back tire. No, come on, rubber. Please hold air for Nikolai Rogatkin. That's gonna be the end of his day, Pat. And no history for Rogatkin. Unfortunately, not a chance to go after 
the unattainable up to this point. Uh, I think he yeah. overcorrected in that berm. He bobbled a little bit on the landing on the left-hand hip and pushed yeah. a little bit too hard to recover into the first jump of that four pack. He actually ended up with too much speed for that cast roll. So here we go, the triple tail whip. A Nikolai Rogatkin favorite right into the three whip. He comes up a little tiny bit short, drops a foot, and there's where that mistake started. He took a pedal into this jump that's already really easy to overshoot. He lunged forward into that cast roll that put him even further down the landing. And, and when you land that flat, that sideways, there's no chance that tire is going to hold on. And with that fall right there, it sealed his fate. Not just for the overall. He was in a battle also with Emilio Hansen. But that's the trophy that will not be going to any rider here today. But the title for Joyride Champion is still at stake for Slopestyle. You have the Crankworks Slope Style World Tour title, a battle that still ensues. And we tried. We tried to speculate how this was going to unfold. There's no way that we could have seen this go down the way that it's going down, based on practice, based on just knowing what we know about these riders as Nico Schultz drops in. Nico Schultz with a run in the bag, so an opportunity to roll the dice and gamble a little bit here. He's doing double. it. Oh, the loft is double flip. We've seen all day. I cannot believe how high he went on that double backflip. Nico Schultz is going to throw all caution to the wind here in this run. There it oh. is, the signature move from the German rider. The biggest, biggest extension of a tsunami backflip we see in modern day slope style mountain biking. A tuck no hander up into the whale tail. A backflip tuck no hander out. Looking really composed into the cannon, getting that tail whip. This kid is starting to look like a veteran. What does he have on the last feature? Nico Schultz, the 22-year-old, off the oh, side. Lands the 360. Oh man, almost bobbling up there on the top of that cabin, but then maintaining composure and lunging into that 360. There has been such a buzz for the past season and a half with Nico Schultz. You talk to the riders, they know just how talented he is. And to deliver that run with this crowd <laughs> at this location, well, what a great at, day for the German. Look at the celebration. No better feeling than being in that finished corral with friends, fans, family. A couple things from run number one that we were wishing we saw, we got to see in run number two. A lofty double backflip, landing two tires at exactly the same time. He's gonna get huge amplitude points for that as it was so high in the air. And then right here, fully horizontal with those legs, relying on finger pressure on the brake levers to keep him connected to that bicycle. And then right here, judging exactly the right amount of speed to do a tail up on that cannon log. He missed the trick up and almost over rotated the 360, but ended up opening up his body, slowing it down and landing perfect. So a rider that has been paving his way for years to make it onto the circuit for this exact day. Great to see Nico Schultz put together from start to finish. An incredible run there. As scores being tabulated. And it has been a difficult day when you talk about this many features, this many uh, talented riders. And uh, to quantify that, it's no easy task. It's a physical <laughs> challenge. It's also a mental challenge, especially with the energy. You see the crowd behind Nico right there as he waits for his score. And a 64.8, only good enough for 11th place. So a definite improvement for him, but uh, not quite getting the numbers needed to move up. Well, doing what he needs yeah. to do, I'd imagine, to stay on tour next year because yeah. he is such an exciting rider, so it's great to see him getting those valuable points. So, so, so the current standings look like this. Missouri in third, Johansson in second, and Brandon Semenuk on the precipice of being a five-time Red Bull Joyride champion. As Jakob Wenzel gets ready to drop in. And we saw what he was able to do on run number one. Our upcoming riders, you see them to the left of your screen, is still some people that will challenge the likes of Brandon Semenuk. Jakob Wenzel gets ready. 
started riding at nine years old, a little later than some, and quickly adapted well on the two wheels. Competed and started focusing on slope style when he was 17 years old, and here we go. Jakob Benzel, run number two. Well, Jakob Benzel looking opportunity square in the eyes, his last chance for a huge finish out here. That combo that we see only him doing, it looked like it was a backflip toboggan to tuck no hander into the four pack. Good extension, landing a little bit long on that 360 tuck no hander, going for the 720 yet again and landing it. Luckily, speed not an option for that hip. And then going for that hipped out backflip yet again into the whale tail, no trick in, but can he make up for it down? He's looking to take the hands off on that 360, but not getting it. Can he improve his Run number one, score, 360 inward table, great style off of the cannon log. Went slightly gusting, last feature for Benzel. A 360 yes. up and a talk no hander down. Smooth run for Jakob Benzel. So you can see them kind of shaking it off there. A couple of missed opportunities, but nonetheless, uh, solid performance by Jakob. Yeah, he got yeah. some of those combos in that he missed in run number one. And you know what? With 12 features, we see this time and time again, a run that has a couple little holes in it. One of the big holes was not getting as big of a trick as he would like off the last feature. That's probably why he's shaking his head there. But so great to see him into this competition. He fought his way back. He landed pretty long on that 360 tucked on hander. Then stomped that 720 in both runs now. And then a really interesting axis rotation on the back flip on that hip and the 360 up. Taking a pedal up there, looked like he came up a little bit short on the step up, so not a lot of time to get set up to trick down. But as we've seen, uh, just having success in your first or second run here, that is half the battle. And Wenzel was able to do that on his second run. Not an improvement, so the best he'll be able to do is 12th place. So obviously judges being hypercritical on these runs, really looking at every aspect and uh, you have to think, what is Brandon Semenuk thinking about right now? When well, he's, he's thinking, is there anybody else in this field who's gonna give me a run for my money? <laughs> and I'm sure his run is replaying in his head that got him that top score. Let's replay it now for ourselves. The backflip double tail, the regular direction, overspin, cork 720, linking it into the opposite cork 720. You heard Cam Zink say it at halftime. You gotta expect that Brandon's coming into this competition with tricks that you wouldn't expect him to have. Now, that's kind of a miss for him right there, not getting the variation of the backflip on the cannon log, but the backflip candy bar, a new one for slopestyle mountain biking. Yeah. Deviating from the standard backflip <laughs> one-footed can, sticking his foot through another orifice, Yeah. and the judge is rewarding it. The judge is having to look at so many subtleties of what these guys are delivering. The, the, the rate of progression is staggering as Matt Jones, he's got, a, he's got a clean one in the books now. He's, he's taking care of that. That one's off the, off the checklist. Now it's onward and forward to put the run and maybe add a little bit to see where he can sit after the dust settles. Oh, I'll tell you, he's not going to add a little bit. He's going <laughs> to add a lot, and I would expect to see something right here. The double oh! backflip over-rotated. Well, thank goodness Matt Jones has a solid score in the books for this year's Joyride. You know, he let the dice roll on second run. And good thing he, he decided to wait until well, second run for that yep, double flip. And you, you have to applaud uh, that he you know, is willing to unleash uh, the double on his second run. Such a talented rider, and uh, as we pointed out, such a favorite among all the riders. Um, so much empathy for him <laughs> over the past season, and it's great to see Jones find his flow. Well, I'm really glad he made the right decisions. As we've seen earlier on in this competition, riders struggling with the double backflip on that step up. We were talking about how steep the lip is, how much amplitude it gives you. That means you're gonna have to rotate a double backflip uncomfortably slow. So misjudging the double flip there, Matt Jones. Oh, very relaxed Semenuk. Uh, like we said, we did not anticipate things unfolding the way they are. And there is Reed Boggs. We mentioned out of Hurricane Utah, a man known for unleashing just menacing big mountain lines and he will be a contender at Red Bull Rampage as we look forward to that event come October. He has to be one of the most... Looking back, you see moments in time 
where the planet believed wholeheartedly that something couldn't be done. Over and over again throughout history, you find these individuals that change everything. One moment, an entire species believes something is not possible. And then, in a fraction of a second, it is. What do you have here? There it is, the double backflip, and he lands it. But who are these people that question impossible? Who's done it before? And who hasn't? Who could do it again? Andreo McConaughey. Cam Zink. And again. Kyle Strait. Kurt Sorge. Brandon Semina. And again. And what will happen when you put all 21 of these individuals together on 1,000 feet of vertical desert? We are so much looking forward to that come October, but right now all eyes are focused on the Red Bull Joyride, the fourth stop of the season, the final stop as we culminate a dramatic back and forth with so many riders as our next rider, as I mentioned, out of Hurricane Utah. His biggest love, no surprise, big rampage lines from Midwest. Cleveland, Ohio, moved to Hurricane Utah. He's shown how that dedication has paid off. Now the big question, the dedication to slope style, that aspect of his riding, can he find it here in his second and final run? Well, there's not a lot of riders you're gonna see in both fields here between Red Bull Joyride and Rampage, but Reed Boggs, a young rider who can do it all. Physic, oh, oh no! Bobbling the double tail whip at the start of this run. Didn't even see what went wrong for Boggs there. Was I think he just missed feet yeah. on the double tail up. Luckily, he had a good score from run number one. That's why he's been dropping so late in this field for the second runs. Reed Boggs, yeah, current was uh, in eighth as he dropped in on that run. So definitely bodes well for requalification. But and let's talk about the mental strength of this kid to show up to every day of practice, knowing that he's only an alternate, having no clue if he was gonna get the final call to ride the event, and then just yeah. putting his focus cap on and, and getting ready to drop a first run that was solid top to bottom. And it's something he's gotten used to. He was the first alternate in New Zealand and was able to take Matt Jones' spot and uh, found himself in that similar position. So it's uh, great to see Reed Boggs on course. Uh, such, a, such a simple misstep for him. It's a little surprising. Yeah, easy for us to say that a double yeah. tail <laughs> is simple, but after watching how effortless he made everything look in run number one and then doing it for the fans here. So, uh, yeah, a little inconsistent there for Reed Boggs. So we'll look for him come October in Rampage as we continue with the second runs. Let's uh, check in with Tina Dixon for a score report. Well, for those of you just joining us, one of the big stories that we've been following is the Triple Crown. And unfortunately, Nik Nikolai Regekin, one of our big, he's the only contender, fall on the first run and a flat tire on the second run, so he will not be taking it home this year. But on the good side, Emil Johansson, he is our current overall World Series leader. He is looking very solid. In fact, Brandon Semenek has said he is the future of this sport. And speaking of Brandon, guys, he is still in that first place spot. Thanks, Tina. Yeah, it's, uh, this is a, an odd sight. We're not used to seeing this. Uh, Brandon Semenuk at ease be, beyond any, any relaxed Semenuk we've seen before. Well, hearing that, he told Tina that Emil is the future of the sport. You know yeah. that he may appear at ease, but knowing what level Emil Johansson is on, that's going to be a huge bullet he still has to dodge. Well, for Johansson, it's about the overall title and potentially grabbing a first ever Red Bull Joyride title. For Semenuk, it's can he secure five Joyride wins as Thomas Lemoyne drops in. Well, Thomas Lemoyne, another rider with an opportunity to do some of those bigger tricks we've seen him do in this season, oh. like that backflip double tail whip. He misses the pedals. We saw him do that trick in Innsbruck. Good enough for a podium finish, a third place at the last time we saw him yeah. at the Crankworx World Tour, knowing yeah. what he had to do here, but 
Man, that jump is claiming a lot yeah, of victims. Yeah, it is eat, eating up the world's best. Uh, a challenging course, to say the least. Um, and just a, a little further moment of relaxation for Semenuk, still in the top spot with just a handful of riders to go. Brandon Semenuk will be our final rider to go. Will it be a victory lap? Well, Thomas Lemoyne doing it for the crowd here. This is a great opportunity to just savor the style and the bike control that this athlete possesses. Still spinning out of the whale tail. So Lemoyne had that, that seamless, smooth style that we saw in his first run, just with that bobble up top. So he'll make his way to the bottom. Lemoyne, the French rider, not able to improve on his second run. But a big developing story <laughs> is unfolding, kind of under the radar, so to speak. We, we know that this rider came in to the mix, coming into Joyride as a contender, sitting in third in the Crankwork Slope Style World Tour rankings. We're talking about Ryan Nyquist. He's about to drop in. Now, let's keep in mind, we talk about his age, the oldest competitor. He's a father of three boys. He has a, a, a career in BMX that speaks in, for itself. He's won every event there is to win in BMX, made the jump, and for Ryan to sit here and actually be looking at a Red Bull Joyride podium finish, please tell me that his mind has to be feeling the pressure, beyond the pressure of the course and the fans. Oh, he's absolutely yeah. thinking about it. He knows he's close. He had a fourth in Rotorua and a fifth in Leger, so it's well within his reach. I mean, he looked like he was putting everything out on the table in run number one, but Ryan Nyquist, a guy who's been at it so long, has so many combinations, expect to see him dump out the bag here in run number two. Nyquist currently sits in fourth as he dropped in. Can he move into third? 360 suicide no-hander utilizing that front brake. The only rider in the field using that, using it again there. And a 720 overspinning on the hip. We should just call it an 800 because he has to rotate more. A backflip one-handed X up all the way past the point of X up. Oh! A 720 <laughs> bar spin. That is the banger he needs right now. Oh. And opposite, 360 suicide no-hander. Oh, he has improved on this run so many times already. Oh, oh no! No, he still has speed. You need to break for this cannon, so he's still on track, Pat. Gets the 360 bar spin off. Oh, he can do it. One last feature, stepping up onto the Kokanee cabin. A backflip off a 360 down, stomped! Ryan Nyquist just found <laughs> the run that he has been looking for all season long on the final run here at Red Bull Joyride. Oh man, I cannot believe how much he improved on that run right there. And reminiscent to the first run, it was on the edge of disaster the entire time. His air awareness, the comfort factor when he is rotating, the way that he's able to adapt with each feature is, it's uncanny. And to be honest, uh, a little frightening. <laughs> Just how comfortable he is in the air. He has his <laughs> own tricks, his own strategy for competitions, and he's been proving it for two decades. I mean, on the yeah. small bike, but now adapting it to the big bike and the big course. Let's go back and take a look at this run. Backflip one-handed X up, the bar's past halfway. And then here's a huge highlight. We expected him to do that. He's been saving it for second run all season, the 720 bar spin, and then opposite direction, 360 suicide, no hander. He blew a pedal off of the whale tail, but recovered in order to trick every single last feature. Unless I'm missing something, Pat, there were no holes in that run. So here's the situation for Ryan Nyquist. He is our third rider to drop in on their second run. So after this, only two more riders. So whatever he gets on this run, that will dictate Will he make the podium or not? Because in the top spots right now, Johansson sits in second. Semenuk, our last rider to drop in, in first place position. Is it enough to crack into the top three? He has to better Missouri's 84.2. If Nyquist is able to do so, it'll be history for this veteran, a papa bear. There's so many riders, I call him Hope on Two Wheels. It's unbelievable what he's been able to accomplish in his long story career. As Johansson looks on, he knows the task at hand. Judges still calibrating for Nyquist. I mean, refl refl 
So will it be enough? Has to better. Scores coming in for oh. Nyquist, an 84.8! A third place for Ryan Nyquist. A career best and a massive moment for the veteran. Just a year ago, he couldn't <laughs> believe he was here. He was pinching himself. Now he'll be standing on this podium. A well-deserved celebration for Ryan Nyquist. Look at the camaraderie between these athletes. Every one of these fellow competitors out here hugging Ryan Nyquist grew up idolizing this guy. And to now see him embracing this sport and the top riders embracing him, what a great story. The crowd loves it. This is a rider that has set the standard what it is to be a professional athlete on a bike, whether it be a BMX bike, a mountain bike. Ryan Nyquist, an incredible moment for him as we readjust our gears, as we reset, as we focus on now on Brandon Semenuk. This was the run that he threw down, the first rider out of the gate this morning. So this is now the run that is replaying in the mind of Emil Johansson. He has to focus on what his strengths are, but some of his strengths are the same as the things that Brandon Semenuk used to get in that top spot so far right now. Linking the opposite double tail up into the regular double tail up. Emil is also doing that 360 tail up. He's making it look so effortless. I wonder if he can add something to that. Emil will be looking to better this run, but this run had something we've never seen before in it. So Emil is really gonna have to step outside the comfort zone and link together 12 ridiculous tricks. So an interesting position right here as we see Brandon Semenuk just off to the side has to sit and watch what Johansson is going to deliver. If Johansson can do the run that we know he's capable of, the overall Crankworks Slope Style World Tour ranking, that's yet but all official. But will oh, it be a Red Bull Joyride? Barsman in there. Oh, he's on fire right now. The backflip tail up to Barsman. This young rider with so much focus. Oh! 360 double Barsman to tail up. He never seems to be rattled. The Cork 720 eyeing up the landing early. Linking it into the backflip, bar spin. The opposite bar spin to Dale on the hip. He's gonna need something really big out of this whale tail. What's it gonna be? 360 tail whip, catching early, a little bit smoother than Brandon's version. What does he have on the cannon? 360 bar spin, attempting to throw the foot over the top two for the one-footed can-can. And into the on-off box to finish things off. 360 there bar spin. Emil Johansson, the future is now, and <laughs> you just witnessed it. Semenuk knows what he just saw. It doesn't bode well to try to hold on to that 89.8. There's been so much talk about Johansson, about the, being the heir apparent, about being the future, but we keep hammering the point, his future is right here in the present. He is delivering the runs that we expect to see now and well into years to come. It's crazy how consistent that kid is. Only his second time here in front of this big crowd. He looked like a veteran last year. Now he's kind of a veteran this year after <laughs> such a hard fought season. The 360 double bar spin to downside tail. He only had one bar spin in there on run number one. So that's one thing that he improved a little bit higher amplitude on that Cork 720, but he had a backflip bar spin to tuck no hander in run number one. This time he missed that tuck no hander. The backflip up, we've seen bigger tricks into that, but the 360 tail up down with absolute precision. Now he was looking for a 360 bar spin to one foot of can. We're gonna see a slow-mo. Did he get his foot over the top too? It looked like he picked it up, but maybe not all the way over for full can-can points. But the truck driver down, it's gonna be a strong score, Pat. I don't know, is it gonna Oof. be enough? Well, 89.8, the score to beat for Johansson to move from second into first. Semenuk will be the last rider to drop in. He'll have final say at this year's Red Bull Joyride. Semenuk going for a fifth Red Bull Joyride victory. Johansson, if he's able to get the score and hold on to it, it will be his first Crankworx victory. The scores coming in. Johansson, will it be better than 89.8? Coming in, 
And the judges did not improve in 84.6, which means Brandon Semenik has done the unthinkable. Five Red Bull Joyride victories here at Crankworks Whistler. What a moment for the Canadian. In front of his hometown yeah. crowd, this kid was born and raised in Whistler, BC. At the same time as this sport was growing, he was a young little lad, 14 years old, taking a look at the Boneyard course going, you know what, someday I want to do this. They give away a ring every time you win this competition. He's got five fingers on his hand. Now he has five rings put on every one of those fingers. Semenuk knew that this was the moment he was waiting for, took time off focused in the offseason on video parts and really developing the line that he wanted to throw down. And the fact that he was able to do it on the first of two runs just speaks volumes about Semenuk's ability as he takes a victory lap. Brandon Semenuk has done so much to get this sport to the point where it is right now. All these fans know this guy. They probably have posters on their wall with pictures of this guy. And now he's doing it for them, a victory lap for his hometown crowd. Whistler making some noise for Brandon Semler. Oh. oh, a hard crash during his victory lap. Did not see that one coming. You can hear the fans though. Well, Brandon happy that happened yeah. in his victory <laughs> lap and not his winning run. He'll be laughing about that soon enough. He looks like he's all right, but crazy. Uncharacteristic fall for Brandon Semenuk. He was looking to crack into a big old motocross whip for the fans out here. You can hear him straightening his stem. And that's the thing about yeah. slope style. Even the best can fall on even the smallest things. Well, just the, the commitment over the years we've seen out of Brandon Semenuk. Uh, incredible back and forth. And we were talking about this before we came on air today. The fact that we didn't see him throughout this season, and then to come and just jump in on the big show like you never, you know, like you never left. Yeah, this is yeah. The, the event that got him into the sport to begin with. This is the event that means the most to him. So he quietly was training on his private compound in his backyard to get to this point. To win this event one time is just outstanding. Paul Bassagodi was the first guy to win it twice. He did it back-to-back -back years. Brandon Semenuk now in his long career, five victories to his name. It's so, gonna be tough for anybody to surpass that. So Semenuk will make his way down the course to all the fans in the finish corral. A five-time Red Bull Joyride champion. Such a creative <laughs> force. I mean, he could just blend style. into the crowd right here. He doesn't need to continue riding. But he loves these fans just as much as they love him. And he's going to finish out this run. 360 bar spin out of the whale tail. And you just think about the amount of hours Brandon Semenuk has spent on this piece of dirt over the years, perfecting his craft. And the amount yeah. of hours he's spent just yeah. thinking about <laughs> the dirt on this course. So it is official. Now down to the bottom, Semenuk joins the revelry. Five-time Red Bull. Joyride champion, Brandon Semenuk, enjoying the spoils. So you can uh, feel the jubilation, the celebration. Uh, for more on that, we check in with Tina Dixon. Yeah, thanks guys. Brandon, he's, hu he's actually hugging Emil right now. You know, he did tell us earlier that Emil is the future of this sport, but Brandon, this is your day. You dropped first. We never see you do that. Kind of walk us through that and your run, including the new trick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't remember the last time I've ever dropped first, and maybe I never have. So that was, like, extremely stressful. Usually you watch a few dudes go, and you get excited, and you kind of, like, almost, like, bring some blood into your body. But I was just, like, felt so cold turkey, so so thankful I got, got a pretty good run in on the first one. And, I definitely missed a couple little things and could have cleaned it up, but it's just like, it's such a long course. And like, like we saw today, so many people crashed and it's uh, survival. Like it's stupidest crash is just cruising down the course because it's just too windy. Emil, you said earlier that he is the future of this sport. How would you sum up him? Oh, absolutely the future. Like give him another year or two to like fill in the blanks and 
I bet he'll be the next unstoppable dude in the, in the circuit. All right, so this, you've won this event before. This is your fifth win here at Red Bull Joyride. What is it about this event? We didn't see you compete early on, but what is it about Red Bull Joyride Whistler that brings you out? I mean, it's my hometown. It's the biggest slope style of the year. So obviously, if I'm gonna do a slope style event, it's gonna be this one. Congratulations on this win, guys. Thank you, Tina. Well, the hometown hero <laughs> makes everyone proud as we see second place finisher and uh, Crankworx Slope Style World Tour champ Emil Johansson next to five-time Red Bull Joyride champion Brandon Semenik. And I mentioned that overall title. That was an incredible back and forth as well. There were so many titles, so many things at stake here today, Cam. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the Triple Crown didn't happen, but Emil delivering on the hopes to win the World Tour overall, and you have to have solid results in every single event to get a high number next to your name. Scores in the 90s or the 80s, all four stops. That's how Emilio Hansen won the Crankworx Slopes Out World Tour. Right now, let's send it down to Tina Dixon, who's with our Crankworx Slope Style World Tour champ. Tina? Yeah, that's right. A huge congratulations on the Slope Style World Championship. Emil, I was just talking to you, and you said that you looked up to Brandon Semenek. You've looked up to all of these riders that were competing here. Now to have won this, how do you describe it? Uh, I don't even know where to start. Like, it's something I always dream about, like, getting on top, and now I've done it. <laughs> Feels good. Your run is so much fun to watch, you know, and you told us earlier that it was kind of hard to formulate, but when you were going down on that second run, just how did you piece it together and what was going through your mind? Uh, second run, I wanted to step up a few things, but I ended up going too far in the cork serve, so I didn't really get what I wanted on the second one in the four pack, but I still wasn't in second place, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, and congrats on, congrats on that overall title, guys, and Brandon Semenek did say he is the future of this sport. Thank you, Tina. As we said, though, the future is now because Johansson, a second place finish and then wins the overall. Yeah, like I said, it's his moments now. Uh, notable mention, uh, big congratulations goes to third place finisher, American Ryan Nyquist, followed by Emil Johansson and Brandon Semenuk, a five-time Red Bull Joyride champion. As the dust settles, We'll start to get ready to hand out the hardware here at the fourth and final stop of the Crankworx World Tour. It is Crankworx Whistler Red Bull Joyride. Stay close. We'll be right back after these messages.
We want to remind all the fans watching Red Bull Joyride today, be sure to go to RedBullTV.com and check out the Red Bull TV Analyzer. Go back, pick your favorite rider, your favorite moment. Feel free to share it via Facebook, via Twitter. It puts you, the viewer, in the director's seat. And the best thing of all, you can go back and watch from start to finish every stop of the Crankworks World Tour. It's the Red Bull TV Analyzer. Don't forget to check it out at the culmination of today's event. And you can see fans filling the village here in Whistler, Crankworks Whistler, the fourth and final stop. Uh, what a season ender. Um, like we said, we couldn't write a more dramatic script as we saw things unfold. Uh, the unthinkable happened with Brandon Semenuk being the first to drop in. We've never seen it. He's never seen it. You even heard from him. To, to hear him say that he was a little rattled, uh, you know, the cold turkey in his blood. Yeah, he's dominated for so long. He's never found himself in the situation dropping first. But let's check out our top three. Ryan Nyquist on the podium, <laughs> third place. Interesting talking point. In 2005, he was on the podium at a BMX event on this same slope. I'm sure he never thought he was going to switch sports and get back on the podium on a big mountain bike, but he has all the tricks to be able to do it. He proved it here. Last year, 316, the drop into the finish corral. He said it was the biggest and gnarliest thing he's ever done in his life. Now he's put in all the time, it's become routine to him, and now it's just the ender to an, a ridiculous run, including things like that 720 bar spin. And beyond Jay Miron's uh, Red Bull Elevation event, he was winning contests for a solid decade before on the BMX bike, so what an incredible day for Ryan Nyquist. Emil Johansson, we can't say enough good things about this young rider. From the old dog to the young pup, Emil Johansson, like Brandon Semenuk said, he represents the future of the sport. He's the product of everything that's happened on this historic joyride course on the bone ride, the boneyard slope, doing cork 720s, linking everything together, making the 360 tail up down the step down look even easier than the way Brandon Semenuk can do it. That's how Brandon can identify young talent right here and give a nod just shows how much camaraderie there is out here between these riders. Second place for the World Tour overall slope yeah. style champion, Emil Johansson. And, and the ability for him to wash off those rattled nerves, incredible. And then there's the rider, as I pointed out, often emulated, never duplicated. Brandon Semenuk has set a standard for so long and be a five-time champion, it just, it doesn't roll off the tongue so easily. <laughs> no, it helps to be a veteran, but I gotta think it's even harder to repeat on those victories. The fact that he's done it five times now, he's had to bring something different to the table every single time in order to beat the new talent on hand. Now doing that new trick, the backflip candy bar, putting the foot through the hands over the top of the handlebar, always brings surprises to Red Bull Joyride. And if you had to, if you had to be a betting man, you'd have to say Semina, that, Victory, five, t five titles is gonna last for a very long time for sure as we get to the award ceremony as Ryan Nyquist takes to the stage a third place finish here at Red Bull Joyride 2017. What an incredible day for this humble veteran. Well, this 38-year-old legend is gonna be a part of this sport as long as he wants to be getting solid results at every single event this season, bringing his own flair, the flair that brought him so much success in BMX, now doing the same thing in slope style mountain biking. And really redefining uh, the expectations of one's age uh, when it comes to be uh, on two wheels. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it helps a lot for an 18 year old like Emilio Hansen to see a guy who's 20 years older than him standing right alongside him on the podium. I hope to see Emil yeah. out here at the age of 38 as well. It's gonna be great to watch that whole career transpire and to share the podium with mountain bike slope style royalty, the likes of Semenuk, uh, a five-time Red Bull Joyride champion. Uh, that's an honor in itself, as you, you see the hometown hero, Brandon Semenuk, about to take to the stage. And this has been so many years in the making. The fact that he was able to deliver this many times, this consistently on this size of a stage is just staggering. His demeanor throughout the entire week was so calm. He did not seem worried at all. And now he went ahead to be the first guy to drop on the course, sit in the hot seat the entire day. It's almost like he knew this was his event. And that's good. That, that'll be a record in itself. Uh, the rider to drop in first to, you know, to, to take the win at Red Bull Joyride. I don't see that one being eclipsed anytime soon either. So a full <laughs> hand of slope style Super Bowl rings going to Brandon Semenuk. Like you said, who knows if we'll ever see anybody win more joyrides than this man right here. 
He's just soaking up all the adulation from this massive crowd of fans, but also bike riders who show up here in Whistler to enjoy the mountain and the spectacle of Joyride. And that's, that's the best thing about the Crankworks event. It's a 10-day deluge of all things mountain biking, no matter if you're talking pump track, downhill, slope style. There's something for everyone, and all the people out here that hike up the hills and put their time in the dirt. What's great about them, 80 to 90% of these people are participants. These are people that spend time on two wheels and are very happy about it. And that's why they enjoy this sport so much. They may not be able to relate to a backflip double tail up or a <laughs> flat drop flip candy bar, but the way these guys ride their bikes, the control they demonstrate over that two-wheeled machine is something that all these fans can admire. So a great moment for these three riders and an even better moment for the fans. The proximity you have with the, the pros here in Whistler is just amazing. I want to remind everyone about an upcoming event. Next weekend on Red Bull TV, the season finale of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in Val de Sol, Italy. All overall titles in men's and women's cross country and downhill are on the line. One of the most demanding terrains on the circuit. Tune in. Obviously looking forward to that. And uh, we were talking about the 10-day deluge that is Crankworks. There's so many disciplines. And that brings us to king and queen of Crankworks. Yeah, it's been nonstop action every day of this long 10-day festival. Let's talk about the queen, Jill. Strong on the pump track. But also, for the Queen of Crankworks title, you have to drop in and attempt to be good at all these other disciplines. She lives in Washington these days, so they have great downhill riding there. She hops on the downhill bike at all the events, gets some points, taking away the crown of Queen of Crankworks for 2017. Congratulations go out to Jill Kintner. An incredible rider in multiple disciplines. The American, Kittner. Moving on to the king of Crankworks. Now another BMX transplant, Adrian Larone, out of France. A guy who showed up to the Crankwork festivals originally as a strong pump track contender and then just slowly started to branch out. First into speed and style, having to adapt to flat corners and learn tricks. We saw him here in Whistler doing tricks that he hadn't been doing all season, backflip tucked on handers, 360 tables, and then of course we expect him to do well on the pump track, and he always delivers, getting valuable points from all these disciplines, some that he specializes in, and some that he had to learn to grab his crown for King of Crankworks. It's a tough yeah. battle. In each discipline, uh, some great back and forth. Uh, just like with the pump track with Jill, we saw her and Buchanan go back and forth, and it was the same for Lerone. Uh, just contentious battles on all fronts, but I think it goes without saying uh, what a season and what a place to culminate uh, uh, the season-long march. It starts in Rotorua, and it ended here, and uh, I think we can all wear a, a pretty comfortable smile on our face after what we witnessed today, Brandon Semenuk making history. Five Red Bull Joyride titles and in the process challenge the best in the world. We hope you guys have enjoyed the show, the Crankworks World Tour. We will be back next year on behalf of Tina Dixon, Cam McCall, I'm Pat Parnell. We will see you then. Take care.